tight. Bengals lead it with a mark of 36 and 35. They've won seven of the last nine against Cleveland, including three of the last four here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Ian Eagle, Rich Gatt, and the rest of our CBS crew. Billy Cundiff will kick it off because of the injury to Phil Dawson out for the second straight week with a right calf injury. Cundiff, the former Dallas Cowboy, cup of coffee with the New Orleans Saints. And Andre Caldwell is the return man deep for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati, a 23-20 win over Pittsburgh. A four-yard touchdown, Palmer to Caldwell with 14 seconds remaining to get the win. What a breakthrough victory that was for the Bengals. Meanwhile, the Browns 0-3. Nine consecutive losses. They have not lost 10 in a row since an 11-game losing streak, bridging 1974 and 75. We're underway in the Battle of Ohio. Cincinnati with a football first. Caldwell has stood up as he crossed the 10-yard line by Mike Adams on special teams. So they open up at the 12-yard line. First play from scrimmage, a double tight end set with Coates and Foshi for Cincinnati. Take the handoff. Palmer looking to throw, rolling out, buying some time. Throws and finds the open man, Daniel Coates, upfield and across the 30-yard line. A first down to open things up, and it covers 20 yards. Cedric Benson among the league leaders in rushing totals. Had a career-high 171 yards rushing in his last game against the Browns. Palmer throwing good protection and able to make the connection to J.P. Fasci over the middle. And off. Benson getting his first touch. And Cedric Benson leaning forward out across the 40-yard line. Needed two yards. He got two yards to quell Jackson over there to make the play for Cleveland. Well, this is what they got to clean up their run defense. And I think that defensively, communication, the mental errors, the missed assignments, the poor tackling, it's all things that that man right there, Rob Ryan, defensive coordinator, has spent extra time on this week. He feels like there's talent on that side of the ball. They just have to play better, particularly early in games. And one thing Ryan and this defense has to be aware of, Dennis Rowland has been an eligible receiver as an extra offensive lineman, second year offensive lineman out of Georgia. Yeah, they bring six linemen in the game and they give you some of these unbalanced looks. They like to run the ball out of this and of course the play action game big as well. That flag down, ran out of time. Offense, five yard penalty, first down. And Scott Green, now in his 19th year in the NFL, our referee today, a Delaware guy. Mike Adams is a Delaware guy. We got Delaware guys all over the place. Well, that's good to see, and uh, making the Blue Hen family proud. You know, I got to tell you, I'm a little surprised at that that uh, delay of game there by Carson Palmer, a veteran quarterback, very savvy, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Started one, started with one right there early in this football game. So back it up, a first and 15 now for Cincinnati. First possession of the day. And off. Benson looks for an opening, and Benson able to shoot through it out across the 40, back to the original line of scrimmage. Cameron Wimbley down low to bring down Cedric Benson. And no longer is this just a nice story that Benson has found a home in the NFL. Benson has become a go-to guy for the Cincinnati offense. He really has. I think he realizes what the opportunity that he has here in Cincinnati in his fifth year. He's a tough tackle. I think he usually makes the first first guy miss he, he's second right now in the AFC in Russian third in the National Football League he's really done a nice job so far for the Bengals Ocho Cinco heads to the sideline he's replaced by Chris Henry who's split out to the near side running play Benson makes one man miss little stop and go off the stutter step and able to get out across the 45 Browns claim they've got the football Benson wouldn't go down it happened right in front of Eric Mangini and defensive coordinator Rob Ryan. Four-yard game. Eric Barton holding the football, but... was stopped. Third down. Benson is ruled down on the play. Dequell Jackson among those over there. Forward progress. Stop the play. Well, this is what you want to do with Cedric Benson. You want to make him go this way rather than this way. I think this is a positive already for this Browns defense. Watch him force him to the boundary. Get some hats over there. You see Mike Adams pushing his thing back up inside. Now you see they try to get that strip right at the very end. Brian Leonard has come on on a third and six. Fans trying to get vocal here. Bengals moving the football. Palmer out of the gun. Palmer pumping, throws, and in stride, he's got Andre Caldwell. Boy, has Caldwell ever stepped up in his second year out of Florida, replacing 
in many respects, T.J. Hushmanzada on third downs and coming out of the slot. And what did Carson Palmer tell us last night about Andre Caldwell? Very unselfish. He'll do the little things. The interesting thing here, who do they go after? They go after Mike Adams, who's making the start for Brandon McDonald, a safety that's been converted to play corner today. That's a, that's a good matchup to watch how the Bengals are going to attack Mike Adams. And now Palmer is 3 of 3, 51 yards. Right here. That's the corner you're talking about, Mike Adams. And right now he's got a matchup with Ocho Cinco. Palmer looks for him. There it is. And finds his man. Out across the 15-yard line. Brodney Poole over there to help out. That's a 17-yard hookup. And you nailed that assignment right from the start. And you got the sense when we talked to Carson Palmer last night, he was very aware of the situation. Now, this is too deep coverage. And Mike Adams is counting on some safety help from Abram Elam in the middle there. You can see they rally late. But that's what's going to happen. They're going to try and find creative ways for Masterly to go ahead and attack that Brown secondary. Line of scrimmage just short of the 13-yard line now for Cincinnati. Palmer checking off at the line of scrimmage. Into a running play. Cedric Benson sticks his helmet down and is able to cross the 10-yard line for a three, three-and-a-half-yard gain. Brodney Poole making the play defensively. Well, in the red zone, the Cincinnati offense has been very successful so far with six touchdowns produced inside the 20. Well, very productive and very efficient. And as you, as you would expect with a veteran player like Carson Palmer, he makes good decisions on this part of the field, and he doesn't throw interceptions. Palmer has four touchdowns, no picks in the red zone so far this year. Palmer, plenty of time, flushed out of the pocket. Tried to find Benson, who couldn't hold on to it. Kenyon Coleman among those applying the heat on Carson Palmer. And this is what the Browns have to do. You have to force Carson Palmer to get off the spot, to make a move to his right or to his left. Force him to throw it on the run. If you let him sit in that pocket and you give him time, he can really pick you apart. Third and seven. Tenth play of the drive for Cincinnati. Bengals looking to get on the board first. Three receivers set. See all the communication going on in that Browns defense. Working out of the gun, Palmer. Long count, movement. And a flag comes down. Play clock had hit zero. That's going to be on the offense. Penalties in this part of the field, Ian, absolutely kill you. Timeout, Cincinnati. Looks like Cincinnati caught a break here on the timeout call. Yeah, they really did. You keep an eye on the clock there. They're late getting it off. Very fortunate in that situation. Should have been a five-yard penalty. Instead, they get the timeout, a third and seven from the 10-yard line. Palmer, shotgun, steps up. Palmer. And hit at the five-yard line. He picks up five yards. Didn't have anything going through the air as he took a shot from Barton and Hall. And now Cincinnati will settle for the field goal attempt. Good job in the coverage, forcing Carson Palmer to step up and run with it. That's a win for the Bengals to hold him to a field goal in that situation. So Shane Graham on for the 23-yard field goal attempt. Well, they've had some problems, Ian, in, in these situations with the, the exchange from the center to the holder. They've missed two already this year because of bad snaps. Brad St. Louis, the snapper. Another Kevin high one. Huber. And look at that. A block. Sean Rogers, his ninth career blocked field goal attempt. A high snap. Another high snap. Cincinnati Bengals have nothing to show for the long drive to open things up here. So the Browns take over a first and ten at the 20-yard line. First possession. Looking for Derek Anderson to kickstart this offense. Three receivers set on the first play from scrimmage. Running play. Jerome Harrison waits for the hole and he's brought down after a gain of two, two and a half. Second and seven, we'll call it, for Cleveland. Anderson to throw. Out route and a drop ball. Uh, something that really plagued Braylon Edwards last year. Shotgun on third and seven. Protection holds up. Anderson's strong arm and nobody home. In the direction of Furry. Mohamed Masakwa on a cross. 
over in the area as well. And Mangini's offense goes three and out. Yeah, that's not when you that's not the way you want to start three and out when you make a change and you're trying to get this offense going. You see the, the communication there between Derek Anderson and Braylon Edwards. 16 drops a year ago by Braylon Edwards. And I always think that his focus and his concentration is usually the issue there. He's got to find a way to make those catches and help this offense get off to better starts. Rich, they had the ball a grand total of 43 seconds. Astadil the punt. Juan Cosby second in the AFC and punt return average lets that one bounce. And Brandon McDonald is back on the field defensively for Cleveland on first down. It's J.P. Fashi getting involved once again, a nine-yard pickup. Uh, with the injury to Reggie Kelly, Ben Utek out as well. They're trying to find something consistent at that tight end position, and Coach and Fashi have already been involved here in the first quarter. Yeah, I think they both bring a little something different to the party. I think Coach is probably the better blocker, certainly helps him in the run game, and certainly J.P. Fashi is a guy that can come in off the bench and give you a little production down the field in the passing game. Second and one now for Cincinnati, second possession, and a little trickery. Andre Caldwell will get the first down, and Caldwell stays on his feet with a spin move. Missed tackles out along the perimeter as Eric Wright took a whiff. And a new set of downs for Cincinnati to work with. Well, you talk about missed tackles, Ian. Improving your run defense, not that all, all that complicated. you got to understand your assignments, improve your run fits, and do this. Tackle better. That's really what it boils down to. This defense, they have to tackle better. They are the third worst rush defense in the NFL right now with Houston and Tampa Bay basically in the same zip code as Cleveland. All three have struggled in that aspect. Pass midfield, and flags come down. So we've seen a couple of penalties. Now called against Full Cincinnati. Start. Offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Andrew Whitworth, the starter at left tackle. Versatile offensive lineman, formerly played at that left guard position. You know, Cincinnati has not started games particularly well either. I mean, they have to find ways to get off the better starts. They, they scored just seven points so far this season in the first quarter. And Carson Palmer told us yesterday, he said, we can't be the team we want to be if we keep waiting until the fourth quarter to start playing. Now, they trailed 20-9 to nine with three minutes to go in the third quarter last week before rallying against the defending Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers. Hank Poteet is in there as the nickelback and another penalty marker. I think you're getting so much movement by this Cleveland Ball defense. Start. Offense, number 77. It's really Five confusing yards, that late. left side of that offensive First line. Down. And that's back-to-back -back on the LSU product. Andrew Whitworth. A little antsy right now at the left tackle position. A lot of movement on the other side. And I think it's causing him to be a little jumpy. Third penalty called against the Bengals. Bengals have developed this power running game now, which certainly suits them in the AFC North. Well, that's what they built. This offensive line is built to knock you off the ball in the running game. And the right guard, Bobby Williams, I think he sets the tone for that entire group. First and 20, back in their own territory now. Palmer, moving pocket. And hits Daniel Coates. Back into Brown's territory as Cameron Wimbley in coverage. The linebacker brings him down from the gun. Palmer sets his feet. Coates turns it upfield and Daniel Coates getting a good block from Whitworth on that left side of the line. Able to pick up 12 yards through the air. Boy, they have been very deadly with this screen game. When they throw it to the tight end, you're going to see your tight end right there on the left side of your screen. Coates, they have really hurt people on second long and third long with that little screen they kick out to Daniel Coates. On a third and three now for Cincinnati. You talk about the Browns and the pressure they're under. They've been outscored 61 to 9 over the last two games. Now a four receiver set from the gun. Palmer tall in the pocket and knocked away. Mike Adams making the play against Lavernius Coles. So a 53 yard field goal attempt. Or do you go for it? Or do you punt? They're in no man's land here well, with the 35. Well, they have the offense on the field. They're going to go for it. They've already gotten one field goal block. I think that makes the decision a little bit easier for head coach Marvin Lewis. They need three yards to keep this drive alive. Fourth down, Cincinnati. We are under four minutes to play in this opening quarter. 
Boy, they can't get lined up defensively. Cleveland, there's some confusion over there. On a pitch, Bernard Scott. And Scott's got the first down. Rookie out of Abilene Christian, Division II product. You talked about Bobby Williams earlier on the drive. He played a key role there, creating some space. Boy, I love this. They get into an obvious passing situation, passing formation, and then they decide to run the ball with their third down back, Bernard Scott. Look at this offensive line get out in front. This is a big offensive line that's built to run downhill. They really move people in that running game. And Marvin Lewis showing confidence in his offense as well. That's something that can permeate over the course of a season when the team believes that the head coach has a belief in them. Scott stays in the game and now running into a crowd. He'll pick up a couple of yards on forward progress to quell Jackson, first man there for Cleveland leading that defense. Shotgun, Palmer looks. Trying to sling it short to Cedric Benson. And a late flag comes down. Cameron Wimbley was over there defensively. And this is one he's going to see on film tomorrow, Cameron Wimbley, and be frustrated with. There's absolutely no reason for it. Interference, defense, number 95. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And what happens is you get some of these linebackers, even safety types, they panic. You're going to see right here. He's, he's in good position. There's just absolutely no reason to grab and hold. Just play your assignment. If you got yourself in good position, just make the play. Is that a player still learning how to play that new position? Yeah, I think he's a guy that's a great pass rusher. He plays the run very well, but he, he has to find a way to play in space as well in terms of those coverage schemes in the zone coverage. So first and ten inside the 20-yard line. Cedric Benson the call, and Benson leaning forward for a gain of two. Sean Rogers in on that stop for Cleveland. Off the play fake. Palmer throws and a strike to Lavernius Coles. Able to haul it in. Inside the 15-yard line. Gain of three and a half, four yards. Kenyon Coleman applied the pressure. And that's the kind of matchup they want. They want Lavernius Coles on Cameron Wimbley. Wimbley is, as I said, we just talked about the previous play, I am. He's a guy that's very good in the run game. He's a good rusher off the edge. But the area he struggles right now is in coverage. Another long drive for the Cincinnati Bengals. Tenth play of the drive. We have a minute 28 to go in this first quarter. They've worked extra on this week. All week long, Cleveland on third down defense. Third and four. Pumping. Another, another screen. Brian Leonard turns it upfield. And Leonard banged down inside the five. It's an eight-yard pickup. And a new set of downs for Cincinnati. First and goal coming up for the Bengals. Boy, they're really getting hurt in this screen game, and they're doing a nice job. Carson Palmer, watch his action. Eyes downfield, real late pumps. He does a good job holding those linebackers. And then again, that offensive line, their ability to get to the second level and get some hats on those linebackers. Well, Rich, unless something drastic happens on this play, the Cleveland Browns will have the football for a grand total of 52 seconds in the first quarter. Yeah, totally dominated in terms of field time, time, time of possession field. First and goal. Palmer up top. Oh, what a grab! Ocho Cinco! Touchdown, Cincinnati! Oh, they, they don't want him to go to the dog pound. Offensive line is trying to tell him. Anthony Collins, no, no, no. No dog pound. You're on the board. Cincinnati with a 6-0 lead. Well, you know, it's actually pretty good coverage by Eric Wright, but a perfect throw gets it done here. And just watch Ocho Cinco. Watch the concentration. Watch him reach up with one hand right here and pull this thing in. Just good concentration on the boundary by Ocho Cinco. Chad Ocho Cinco. A touchdown on the board. And Eric Mangini wants to challenge it. Always something with him, isn't it? You know, it's hard for him to score a touchdown and go back Cleveland to the bench here. is challenging the ruling on the field that it is a touchdown. So Eric Mangini will challenge it. First challenge of the season for Eric Mangini. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver got his knee down and his elbow down with possession of the ball. Touchdown. Cleveland is charged with a timeout. Now, Rich, our crew has done a terrific job with a multitude of of great looks. Yeah, we had the luxury of sitting here during the commercial and looking at all the different angles, but clearly you're going to watch him. He has possession. He gets that right knee down. Then look at that elbow there. 
and he still maintains possession through the ground. So just a good job on the boundary by Chad Ochocinco. Shane Graham, the extra point. Lopsided doesn't begin to describe what this first quarter has been like in favor of Cincinnati. Yeah, you just can't start games that way. Time of possession, field position, number of plays. Well, here is one of the Browns' weapons, Joshua Cribbs on the return. And Cribbs out across the 45. Cribbs staying on his feet, finally brought down at the 34-yard line. Leon Hall giving chase. Well, the thing I like about Joshua Cribbs as a return man is he is very decisive. He hits it straight downhill. He's a big guy. He runs with power. He's got good vision, good moves in the open field. Look, he's very tough to bring down. 58-yard return. That's what they needed to jumpstart this offense. So 25 seconds remain in this first quarter. The Browns have three yards of total offense. On first down from the 34. Jamal Lewis is out with a hamstring injury. Jerome Harrison getting the nod. Anderson pumping, throwing on the short toss. Harrison able to turn it upfield. And a solid gain of seven on first down as Domata Pecco combines with Malaluga to bring down Harrison. And back in Cleveland, Ian Eagle, Rich Gannon, and the rest of our CBS crew. Browns last week had 186 yards of offense total in the loss to Baltimore. 10 yards of offense in the first quarter. They trail 7-0, a second and three. First play of this second quarter. Double tied and set with Royal and Hyden for Cleveland. Harrison hits the hole, and Harrison up the middle. He's got a first down, a six-yard gain. Hank Fraley with a good block. On first down, keep it on the ground. Harrison waiting for blockers, and ball pops loose. Robert Gathers down the sideline for Cincinnati, and Gathers is gone. Touchdown, Bengals. What a sequence. You know, you think about this, I, the Browns as, as an offense, and collectively they have to do a better job taking care of the ball. They've given the ball away. 10 times now, 10 giveaways. That's an AFC high, and as a result, opponents have now scored 47 points off of turnovers. That's the most in the NFL. They have not done a very good job taking care of the football. You watch right here, you're gonna see Harrison get to the edge. Now watch them gang tackle. Look at all the hats to the ball, and a good job there stripping that ball. You see Gathers there, he picks up. Look at that wall of, of, of blockers he has there, and he goes all the way for six. Leon Hall among those defenders over there, helping to knock the ball free. Extra point from Shane Grant. Robert Gathers, second career touchdown, six-year veteran from Georgia. His uncle Jumpy played 13 years in the NFL. Leon Hall was the man who stripped it. And now the Browns are in a 14 to nothing hole. Krebs, flag down. And brought down, shy of the 30-yard line, Brian Leonard, first man down there to make contact, a 26-yard return. Three penalties so far against the Bengals. Holding, receiving team during the return, number 56, 10-yard penalty, first down. Cincinnati with a 14 to nothing lead. We are just underway here in the second quarter. Cleveland Browns are trying to avoid their 10th consecutive loss going back to last year. Right? Here, Derek Anderson and the Browns, they can take a deep breath. Start all over again. Touchdown gets you right back in this football game. Two tight ends again. It's Royal and Hyden. Royal is the motion man. Give it to Harrison. And Harrison makes sure he's not coughing up the football as he picks up a yard and a half. This is about everybody ready for that defensively for Cincinnati. And you know they're thin at the running back position. As you know, Jamal, uh, Jamal Lewis is down. James Davis, the other running back, was put on injury reserve. They just brought Chris Jennings up to the active roster. So they're very thin at the running back position. They need, they need Jerome Harrison to have a big day. Forget about what happened. Move on. Take care of the football. As a senior at Washington State, Harrison rushed for 1,900 yards. He's been more of a change of pace back in his three previous years with the Browns. Anderson to throw it. Ed Anderson makes the connection. Massaquah 
on the sideline route. So the rookie from Georgia, it's a 30-yard pass and catch. Boy, good job. It all starts with protection. It's good protection off the play action fake. Derek Anderson can really pump the ball down the field. And there's Massaqua, a guy that they're really high on. He's had a great week of practice. He had a great training camp. I think he has a very bright future in this league. He was a second-round pick along with Brian Rubisky, the rookie out of Ohio State. And it's Massaqua who has seen much more action than Rubisky, who was inactive the last couple of weeks. Rubisky is up today. And off. Harrison hits the hole hard. And Harrison keeps the legs churning to the 45-yard line. A seven-yard pickup. Hyden and Mack combining to bring him down. Well, let's take you back. Well, 13 different starting quarterbacks since 1999. Obviously, that's not a good thing. You need production and consistency at this position. And you and I talk about this each week. And they're really hoping, they're really hoping that one of these guys, whether it's Brady Quinn or Derek Anderson, can take the reins and run with it the rest of the way. Anderson went 10-5 and five after replacing Charlie Fry in 2007. Jerome Harrison puts the shoulder down and picks up two yards. Needed more like three. And Duke Way, who is filling in for the injured Roy Williams, making that stop for Cincinnati. You know, I really think the key for Derek Anderson, he has to be decisive with his decisions. He needs to eliminate the peaks and valleys in his play, become more consistent. And finally, I think the other thing is he can't fall in love with the big play every time. When you watch this guy on film, he must be willing to work his progressions and check it down once in a while. He's had four different offensive coordinators in his five years now with the Browns. And Anderson's a big guy at six foot six, 230 pounds. He picks up the yard that they needed to keep this drive going. You know, I think this is a problem. We've talked about this before. You know, just five years in the league, he's already had four different coordinators, and that's a problem for the quarterback. You want consistency in terms of who's talking to you, in terms of systems, in terms of terminology and verbiage. That's a lot you see right there. Brian Dable, their offensive coordinator now in his first year. So he's learning a new system again for the fifth time. Well, that was not a favorable spot for the Cleveland Browns and Derek Anderson. They'll take a look at this. And just enough. Got it by the nose of the football. You know, we talked to Eric Mangini yesterday. He said the evaluation and the decision at the quarterback was as thorough a process as you could have. He felt they both improved during that process. He felt like Brady Quinn to start the season was probably a little further along in terms of his improvement. But after three weeks, I mean, I think so much of what the quarterback does is predicated by what goes on around him. And I just think that when you look at what they've done in the running game, they haven't been very effective. In terms of the passing game, you know, we put a lot of the emphasis on the quarterback. Unfortunately, when things don't go well offensively, we make a change, and it's usually the quarterback. Well, Mangini added that Anderson has had success here, so he brings credibility in that locker room because of what he did in 2007. Take the pitch. And a boot. Anderson throwing, low throw, and it's incomplete. Braylon Edwards, the intended target. Domata Pecco supplied that pressure. Second and ten now for Cleveland. For in Cincinnati territory. Anderson, good protection. Anderson throws, and it was knocked down. Might have been Pat Sims up there. It was Pat Sims stepping in for the injured Tank Johnson and getting a piece of it. And this drove me absolutely crazy as a quarterback. You have good protection. You got an open receiver downfield right before you get ready to nope. throw it. Actually, Gathers. Gathers. Man, he Boy. is all world today. You get a guy that sticks his hand up right at the last second and knocks the ball down. Robert Gathers at six foot three, 280 pounds. Mike Furry checks in as a third receiver. This is now a third and ten for Cleveland. It's been a point of emphasis for this offense all week, trying to convert third downs from the gun. Protection is there. Anderson slings it. Incomplete. He was looking for Furry. Looked and like that ball may have hit Furry as well. Yeah, what happens is you talk about timing and rhythm in the passing game. Derek Anderson hasn't had a lot of reps with these guys. You see Furry there. This ball is going to hit him right as he comes out of his break. Watch this. He's late with his eyes. Watch this. Right up against his chest. And that's the, we talk about getting reps together, working with each other. And you, there hasn't been a lot of that going on when Derek Anderson's been taking a lot of the scout team reps the first three weeks. And Furry's been a dependable target, especially with the Detroit Lions. Zaskiel the punt, 
And Quan Cosby wants to return it. Cosby is buried. You know, if there was ever a time where you need a takeaway or a three and out from your defense, I would think right now would probably be as good as any. You're already down 14 nothing here at home. You, you need something. You need a positive play. Positive play from your defense to help you get back in this game. Defense was able to stall Cincinnati's first drive and then block the field goal attempt. Cincinnati comes back with another long drive. They put seven on the board with a pass to Ocho Cinco and then turnover. Harrison strip. Gathers takes it 75 yards, 14-0 Bengals. On first down, Jeremy Johnson doesn't get a whole lot of carries. Fullback. Bernard Scott now in there for Cincinnati. And Scott tried to make a cut. Dequell Jackson, among others, able to converge and limit Bernard Scott to a one-yard gain. Robert Smith, Eric Barton over there as well. Well, they're counting on players like Eric Barton, who came over with Eric Mangini from the New York Jets. Some veteran players on that defense to really help be leaders and great communicators for this group. I, I think, you know, you talk about how do you become a top 10 defense? Well, first of all, you got to stop the run. The other thing is you have to be able to get off the field on third down and then ex eliminate the explosive plays that have really held back this Cleveland defense. Six former Jets came over with Mangini, all on the defensive side of the ball. On third and six, Poteet in there as a nickelback. Palmer loops one, incomplete. Looking for Ocho Cinco, Brandon McDonald, did not start today. McDonald in his third year, the cornerback from Memphis. He's been inconsistent. And there's the three and out you were talking about, Rich. Yeah, really important. Now hopefully you get your you get Joshua Cribs out there and you get some good field position and you're able to capitalize on a on a good stop by your defense. Cribs has two career touchdowns on punt returns. So you know, this punter for Cincinnati, Kevin Huber, has been very, very good the first three weeks. He's a directional punter, rookie out of Cincinnati. Backpedaling from the 26, Cribs. And brought down at the 31. Browns take over the first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Harrison, single setback. Running play. Harrison diving for a gain of three. One offensive touchdown this season. Brady Quinn to Robert Royal. Anderson, deep throw, and hauled in. Massaqua. First team all SEC for Georgia. And a good tall target for Anderson to throw to. And this is what Derek Anderson gives you, the, the ability to throw the ball down the field vertically. I think he's willing to give these receivers a chance in the passing game. Even if they're covered, he has enough faith and confidence that they'll go up and get the ball. Good job there by the Browns. And a 24-yard hookup. And it looked like good coverage from Leon Hall. Just an excellent grab by Massaqua. So first and 10 now at the 41. Back to the ground, and Jerome Harrison just trying to loosen up this Cincinnati defensive front. Tahani Jones, first man there, give him a gain of one on the play. Harrison now with 26 yards rushing in this first half. Yeah, they have to continue to run the football. They get in trouble if they become one-dimensional. I think that's really important. You talk about getting behind early in games. They've been outscored 55 to 10 in the first half, and they're not good enough now to be able to come back. They're not good enough where they can get in three and four wides and throw it 35 or 40 times a game. How much do they miss Kellen Winslow Jr. too? Well, certainly you miss the production and his ability to work the middle of the field, particularly in the red zone. Out of second and nine now for Anderson. Wants to throw it. Anderson, rainbow delivery. And too far for Massaqua. And a timeout taken. Browns have lost nine in a row. Over that span, they've been outscored 224 to 60. Cleveland trying to put an end to that streak. And with each week that's gone by here, Rich, in 2009, it's gotten worse. They lost to Minnesota by 14 points in the week one. Lost to Denver in week two by 21. Lost to Baltimore by 31 points. And they trail right now 14 to nothing with 6.48 to go in this first half. Shotgun after the timeout. Anderson throwing. Incomplete. On a cross. Robert Royal unable to catch it. Third drop of the day for the Cleveland Browns. And this one is going to get in on Robert Royal. And we talk about the timing and rhythm in the passing game. You can see early in this game, 
Derek Anderson throws a firm ball. He surprises some of these receivers. I mean, he puts it on him real quick, and this one hits him on the back shoulder. And when you throw to tight ends, you got to put it on him. If you throw it on the back shoulder, they're usually not going to make that play. So Cleveland forced to punt with Zastadil. Quan Cosby standing at his own 10. Fair catch. He'll haul it in cleanly at the 10. Unbalanced extra lineman in the game offensively for the Bengals. On first down, Palmer looking to uncork the deep ball. Downfield and first interception of the season for the Browns. It's Rodney Poole. Well, that's just an example right there of Carson Palmer getting greedy early on first down. You get a chance, you get, you get a, a, a shot opportunity, you have to be smart when you're backed up in your own end. He really forces this one down the field to Lavernius Coles. You're going to see McDonald right here. He has, uh, Eric Wright actually, he has help over the top by Bradley Poole. So he can be more aggressive knowing that he has safety help over the top. Palmer took a shot from Sean Rogers as he released the football. Browns have their first pick of the year. And Brodney Poole, the safety out of Oklahoma, making the play for Cleveland. So off the turnover, Browns take over a first and 10 at the 43-yard line. The movement. Hopefully Flicker. Anderson thrown down. Lost the ball at the end of the play. Jenna Doom and Dukeway able to spin down Anderson and wrap him up as the Bengals were not fooled. And here's why I don't like that call. In my film study this week, first down, particularly at the start of a series, defensively, Cincinnati likes to bring pressure. And so you don't want to call a special play, a flea flicker, a play that takes time to develop when they bring pressure. You're going to see in Dukeway, no one blocks the safety off the edge. So you have a change in momentum, and then and you come up with a negative play, and now you're stuck with second and 22. I'm sure that's one that Brian would love to have back. And a loss of 12 on the play for Cleveland. Harrison pressing up the middle and across the 35-yard line. Domata Pecco making the stop. Four-yard pickup, give him four and a half. And the fans voicing their displeasure with the play calling right now. 540 and counting left in the second quarter. Boy, it really is a chess match when you think about play calling. You know, you think about Brian DeBall for, for the Browns going up against Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator for Cincinnati. And you really have to study and you really have to pay attention to tendencies. I think that's really important when you turn when you, when you talk about play selection. So even off the turnover, Cleveland facing a third and long at the 35. Anderson knocked down, tried to set up the screen, and it was almost picked off by Michael Johnson, the rookie from Georgia Tech. Boy, Cincinnati defensively, I tell you, they're doing a much better job in terms of understanding what's coming. Third and long, good example. Watch right here the top of your screen. They anticipate screen all the way. The rush comes up field. Look at him. Watch him just wait. Just wait for that screen out there. Make it very difficult for Derek Anderson to make the throw. Anderson was looking for Joshua Cribs, trying to create in space. Never got the ball to him. Anderson is now 3 of 11 for 61 yards. Zastadil the punt. Cosby fields it at the 11. And hit hard up at the 14-yard line. Nick Sorensen on special teams making the play. 55-yard punt. And Carson Palmer's interception basically acted as a punt on first down. Cleveland did nothing with it. Cedric Benson, it's been a quiet day for Benson. They haven't needed him. They got the defensive touchdown to extend their lead to 14-0. Eric Barton with the tackle. Three, three-and-a-half-yard gain for Benson. You know, with the healthy Carson Palmer back under center this year, I mean, he has been so much more productive Cedric Benson. He's averaging almost four-and-a-half yards a carry. And I, I think last year... With the absence of Carson Palmer, defenses were, were able to crowd the line of scrimmage and make it very difficult for Cincinnati to run the ball effectively. Benson is on pace for 1,563 yards rushing this season. The team record is Rudy Johnson, 1,458 yards, set back in 05. And Benson able to squeeze through a hole out across the 20. It's short of a first down. Rodgers and Barton combined to bring him down. It's a five-yard gain. 
And they've been giving it to Benson. They haven't been shy about featuring the run so far through the first three weeks. And I go back to what Carson Palmer told us a couple weeks ago. He said, we have to be a run-based offense first and foremost, and then off of that will come the big shots in the play-action game and really will help us in terms of our pass protection. That's just how it's unfolded the first month of the season. And Palmer last night told us he thinks Cedric Benson could be an 1,800, 1,900-yard rusher. Doesn't believe that he has peaked by any stretch. From the gun, third and two. Palmer. Incomplete. Andre Caldwell. Flag down. Mike Adams with the coverage. Well, the frustration building for Rob Ryan and these defensive players. And this should never happen. They're playing two deep man coverage underneath. Mike Adams knows he has help over the top from the safety. Absolutely no reason to grab at all. Little powwow from the officials. There's no foul on the play. Wow. Put that. I bet Rob Ryan over there. He might have talked him out of that one. You Talk think this isn't important to him? Would you say talked? Uh, I'm not sure he was talking there. <laughs> he was doing something. I'll tell you, this is important to Rob Ryan, and this defense has, has really been under the gun. They have struggled, but they have really worked hard this week. I was out of practice on Friday. They spent extra time on third down defense. It's what's really held them back. They've done a good job so far here today. Kevin Huber will punt it. A booming kick earlier. Huber has been a revelation in his rookie season. Fifth round pick for the Bengals. Joshua Chris. This is returnable from the 23. Whoa, whoa. Like he was shot out of a cannon. What a weapon. He's been the biggest weapon today. The Browns offensively, they're the return units. 39-yard return after the 55-yard punt brought down by Michael Johnson. Well, this is what makes Joshua Cripps so lethal in terms of the return game. He just makes one cut and he heads right downhill north and south. He is fast. He's big. He's strong. He has great vision. He does a nice job setting up his blocks in the return game. Well, you look at the frustrating starts, the three and outs, the punts, the turnovers. Again, they have to clean things up. They have good field position now. Again, as I said, they have to keep hanging in there. Just down 14 nothing. A score here before they go into halftime would be huge. Abdul Hodge was a little bit slow getting up now, walking towards the sideline. Special teamer for Cincinnati. I just think the biggest thing is you look at the first half of football for Cleveland. They must eliminate the unforced errors, the penalties, the missed assignments, the drops. They're just not good enough to overcome these mistakes early in football games. Joshua Cribbs leading the AFC with an average of 16.7 yards per punt return. That last one just helped his average. And now a first and 10 at the Cincinnati 38 for the Browns offense. We get up to run the ball right here. And they will. Harrison. Uh, looked like a hole was opening up, but Robert Gathers would have none of it. No gain on the play for Harrison. You know, you think about this Cincinnati defense. I think the expectations are higher now on this side of the ball. You, you talked with Mike Zimmer last night. He said he wasn't happy with last week's performance against Pittsburgh. Too many mistakes, too many big plays given up. And I think the positive that you draw from that is they were still able to win the football game. So that's this, this defense has definitely picked up the pace. Now, certainly compared to a year ago where and the Bengals just could not get any consistency. So many injuries, both sides of the ball last year. Another handoff, Harrison, this time able to get to the second level. Just shy of the 30-yard line, give him a gain of eight. Eric Steinbach, the former Bengal with a good block up front. Well, the one thing you know about these Cincinnati safeties, they'll come up and hit you now. The Duke Way's a good one, Chris Crocker, and of course, Roy Williams is not dressed today, but these safeties are very physical in run support. Time winding down as we approach the two-minute warning. Harrison, 33 yards on the ground. They won't get this play off before the two-minute warning. Now they'll talk about it, then face a very makeable third and two. Joshua Cribs has single-handedly kept the Browns in this game. It's 14 to nothing Cincinnati. Just look at the return yards for Cribs by himself. 127, 83 total yards of offense for the Browns. Just, just one of five on third down conversions. I mean, this is critical, critical third down here. Two minutes to play in this first half. Third and two. 
Anderson throwing it up top. Catch is made. Massaqua. Touchdown, Browns. Well, I love the call on third and one, taking a shot. Knowing, knowing that on fourth down, you're probably going to go for it in that situation. But Derek Anderson does an unbelievable job giving his receiver a chance to go up and make a play. First career touchdown for the rookie from Georgia. And this is why they made the change. Derek Anderson, a guy that can really throw the ball the field, down the field vertically and give these young receivers a chance. It's a great shot there by Derek Anderson. Massaqua getting congratulations from his teammates and his head coach, Eric Mangini. And you get excited when we're in week four and, you, and you've only converted your second offensive touchdown. That's why there's a lot of excitement on that sideline for the Browns. They've been outscored 61-9 to nine over the last two games. But like I said, I am one score. It gets them right back in the game. They can go into the halftime down 14-7 with a little bit of momentum, feeling good about themselves. It's good concentration on the boundary by Massaqua. I think he gets that one in. Well, it's not reviewable by a challenge from the coach. It would have to be reviewed as a booth review under two minutes to play. Let's see, another good look at it right here. Yeah, they're going to say maybe he was down before he crossed. I think they might bring that one back. The receiver's actually on his back. His right knee is on the ground. And I don't believe that ball actually would have crossed the goal line. Watch the right knee and see where the ball is right now. Yep. I don't believe it's actually crossed the line. Well, the official was right in position, though, to make the call, wasn't he? He took a look down. Of the goal line with his knee. The ball will be placed on the half-yard line. First and goal. But the Browns just can't get a break, can Boy. they? I mean, this first month, every time that they think they've done something positive, something negative happens. Yeah, and look, just watch the right knee and watch where the ball is right now. Clearly, it's at the, about the one-yard line. So they're going to line it up. First and goal inside the one for the Browns. You, know, you, th you think about the, the Browns' struggles offensively. I think good red zone teams have the ability to run the ball, and the Browns have gone 220 consecutive rushes without a touchdown. It's the longest streak in the NFL. 65. You have to be able to run the ball in this part of the field. Very important. 65. Six offensive linemen. Steinbach, eligible receiver. First and goal inside the one. Looking to put points on the board. Fake the handoff. Anderson rolling all the way. Anderson back of the end zone. Touchdown. Steve Hyden. That'll work too. So the Browns finally do have an offensive touchdown. And remember, it was Cribs who set it up with the 39-yard punt return. Well, that's a good job by Derek Anderson, not panicking, not listening to the broadcaster in the booth say throw it away, holding the ball on the edge. Just keep coming. Watch the receivers do a nice job. Eric Hyden working that back line, give him an outlet throw. Billy Kundefan for the extra point. Goes to show you what I know about playing quarterback. <laughs> well, your first instinct was, hey, no way. live to see another day. It'll be second and goal. Derek Anderson and the Browns. They put up seven with a minute 26 to go in this second quarter. Cincinnati with the touchdown lead. We talk about how Cleveland was outmatched in the first half, the first quarter in terms of field position and time of possession and yards gained. Same thing happened there for Cincinnati in the second half. Not a lot of not second quarter, not a lot of opportunities for them offensively. Kunda kicks off to Caldwell. Trying to bust it to the outside. And Caldwell angled out of bounds after the 19-yard return by Coy Francis, the rookie. Carson Palmer will have a minute 20 to work with here. His team is in front 14 to 7. Yeah, minute 20 and two timeouts. Plenty of time for Carson Palmer in this offense to orchestrate their two-minute offense and go down the field. If you're Cleveland, you just have to find a way to get some pressure on him. He's had a lot of time here in the first half.
to set his feet and make good accurate throws down the field. From the 30-yard line, that's where Cincinnati takes over. Palmer has Leonard back there with him out of the gun. And Palmer will throw it short to Leonard. Nothing doing. A two-yard gain through the air. Clock is rolling. A minute 10 and counting left in this first half. Good job by Cleveland. You'll give those completions all day. Playing your two-deep coverage. Just rides those underneath throws and force Cincinnati to either use a timeout or some clock stoppage. Palmer again on the short toss. And it's Leonard back-to-back -back plays. He's brought down out across the 35-yard line for a gain of four to quell Jackson. Over there to make the stop. Down to 42 seconds left. Third and short now for Cincinnati. And Palmer throwing. Andre Caldwell. And Mike Adams with a good tackle. We'll see where they spot the football. Doesn't look like he's got it. Boy, Cleveland is not happy with that spot. You can see him on the boundary there. There's coaches mm. all oh. over that side, Judge. Yeah, he did get a favorable spot right at the 40-yard line. Clock stops with 19 seconds to play. Boy, you look at Carson Palmer. He's got a great understanding and command of this offense. The ball comes out so quick. He knows where all his secondary, his outlet throws are. Out. Cincinnati. <laughs> So Cincinnati has one timeout remaining. Palmer is trying to make the case that he called the timeout much earlier, and they should put time back on the clock. Right now, 19 seconds remain. They tack on three seconds, so 22 seconds left in this second quarter. But, you know, you, you think about this two-minute situation here. At crunch time this season, Carson Palmer has been on fire the last three weeks. They've got a lot of opportunity. They've had to come from behind late in game, so... He's been very, very good in this hurry-up offense. Well, Cincinnati, it is a first down. Their first of this second quarter. They need about 25 yards or so to attempt a 53-yard field goal. Because that was third down. So ball is spotted at the 40-yard line. And right now, Scott Green is take, taking a look at it on replay to see whether or not it was the right spot. So it's a booth review for Scott Green with 22 seconds to play in this second quarter. You see Rob Ryan talking to Eric Mangino there on the sidelines. And they spent a lot of time during the course of the week putting that defensive game plan together. So another look. Well, that's pretty close. Again, they're going to give him his forward progress. Good job there by Mike Adams. It's pretty close there. You know, they've already moved the sticks. First down marker is now set up at the 50-yard line. I don't believe they'll change that ruling on the field. And what was a fast-moving first half has slowed down quite a bit over the last few minutes, a couple of booth reviews. You know, you think about Cincinnati's emergence this year, how they've played well early. I think it boils down to two things. Offensively, they can now run the football, and defensively, they're doing a much After better job stopping the, play, the run. The receiver was short of the first down. Wow. The ball will be spotted at the 39-and-a-half-yard line, fourth down. So fourth down now for Cincinnati, a half a yard shy of a first down. Boy, you, know, you, you looked at, you, you think in this situation, up 14-7, you'd punt the ball, but Marvin Lewis is a guy that likes to go for it on fourth down. And they are looking over at Marvin Lewis right now to figure out what the next step is. It's 22 seconds remaining. Now, Marvin is going to make his case with Scott Green. The call has already been made. Now, Marvin's point is that receiver was turned around and felt that the football was at the 40. Hey, uh, Mar Marvin's not going to take chances here. No, you can't. Four, up 14-7 here. Yeah, they would have loved a couple of cracks at picking up 25, 30 yards for a field goal attempt. Instead, 
They have to be careful. They got Joshua Cribs back there. Not only that, you got 22 seconds left anyway. And still your chances of getting a field goal or touchdown aren't very good anyway. So you play the odds, you kick it away. Kevin Huber. And they're kicking away from Josh Cribs. Smart I, play. And I got to tell you, it's not the kind of kick that, uh, that Huber was looking for, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have given Joshua Cribs a chance to return that one. Kick it out of bounds. So the Browns take over at the 34-yard line. Only 17 ticks of the clock remain. Derek Anderson, 5 of 13, 91 yards, and a touchdown. Your assessment of his first-half performance? You know what? I think he's done a nice job. They didn't get off to a good start. The fumble certainly hurt him. But he hung in there. He kept this thing together. I think they're playing with more energy offensively. So they're looking at about 30, 30-plus 30 yards to get into field goal range. Anderson set up the screen. Harrison turns it upfield and shoved out of bounds by Brandon Johnson. Seven seconds come off the clock. It's a seven-yard pickup through the air. Ten seconds remain. What do you need? Well, you need about a 22 to 25-yard completion here before the half get out of bounds to give your field goal kicker a chance. With 10 seconds, you have one timeout left. The ball gets completed in the field of play. The receiver has to go down right away and call a timeout. Phil Dawson is out with a right calf injury. Veteran Billy Cundiff stepping in in that role. Anderson, seven seconds left. Anderson throwing to Furry. Timeout, 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 timeout. Well, you got one second left on the clock. And line of scrimmage is now the 45-yard line. And with Derek Anderson's arm now, they can throw this thing down in the end zone and hope to get hope to get a jump ball. Yeah, they would be looking at a 63-yard field goal attempt. Billy Cundiff, he went to Drake. He actually made a 62-yard field goal back in his college days. But he's not going to get a shot here. No, I think that, you know, you got a guy like Derek Anderson who can throw the ball a country mile. And the other thing is you got a guy like Braylon Edwards who's got a great vertical jump. Now, can he come down with it once he goes up there and tries to get it? But that, that's what I would do. I'd give him a chance. Derek Anderson has to buy some time now. He has to get outside the pocket, buy some time, so that those receivers have a chance to run down the field. So Cincinnati has three already set up on the back line. Hail Mary here for the Browns. Final play. Now you see him buy some time. Now keep moving up. Now a little different approach here. Harrison, little shake and bake move, and that'll be the end of this first half. Tahani Jones making the tackle to put an end to things in the second quarter. Cincinnati with a 14-7 lead over the Cleveland Browns with one half complete. And the Browns get the football first to start playing in this second half. Shane Graham will kick it off to Joshua Cribbs, who was the difference maker in the first half for Cleveland, putting them in a position to put some points on the board. Cribs will return it from the five. And Cribs slipping through a hole and brought down at the 25-yard line by Abdul Hodge for Cincinnati on special teams. So Derek Anderson began the day three of 11. Since then, five of his last five he's connected on, including the touchdown. Brady Quinn benched at halftime last week. Anderson threw three interceptions in the second half in the loss to Baltimore. Wonder if he was forcing things a bit, trying to come from behind against the Ravens. And Brady Quinn, the number 22 pick overall in the 2007 draft, is in spectator mode on the sideline. Hand off. Harrison. And Harrison breaking to the clear. Raylan Edwards helping out with a block. 16-yard gain on the ground. First play from scrimmage in this second half. They didn't have a lot of success in the first half rushing just 33 yards. But watch Harrison. Watch him bounce runs to the edge. He's a good perimeter runner, and they have to be able to do that. The absence of Jamal Lewis, who, who can move piles and run up between the tackles. Harrison, more of an edge player. They'd like to get him involved in the screens, but they have to be able to run the ball. They need that balance and symmetry that we talked about in the first half. Harrison's nickname was Ghost oh, like, oh, back in his younger oh, days because he could oh, just oh, disappear oh. on the ground. Oh, some confusion there. And a first down from the 41-yard line after the timeout taken by Anderson. 
play action. Anderson out of the pocket, throwing. He finds Harrison, and a flag down as Harrison extends his body out across the 45-yard line to Honey Jones there to bring him down. That's going to get called back. Eric Steinbeck, the left guard for the Browns, way downfield on that play for some reason. Don't understand why, but he was way downfield. Offensive pass interference, number 65, downfield blocking. That's a 10-yard penalty. Some First confusion down. there by a veteran. You don't expect that. Yeah, Steinbach, former Bengal now in his seventh year in the NFL, dealt with shoulder and rib injuries last season. You know, Steinbach and, and Joe Thomas on that left side have done a really nice job handling Antoine Odom in this game. We haven't called his name out much here in, in through the uh, first first half they've done a nice job slowing down him and neutralizing his pass rush Odom the AFC defensive player of the month first Bengal to win that award since David Fulcher back in 1989 he's against a pro bowl left tackle and Joe Thomas first and 20 for Cleveland Anderson deep drop wow good throw a gun over the middle to Massaqua Chris Crocker there defensively and it covers 19 yards through the air. I'll tell you what, Massaqua has been impressive. You look at this protection, it's real good. Watch this throw right in the hole between the corner and the safety. And Derek Anderson looking very comfortable here early in the second half. And for those who had not heard the name or familiar with the name, Mohamed Massaqua, get to know him. Four catches, 102 yards. Rookie from Georgia. Oh, he's got some speed. So second and one. After the penalty, Cleveland makes it up. A little spin there by Chris Jennings. Just signed off the practice squad. Chris Jennings makes a man miss. Chris Crocker, and it's an eight-yard gain. Excellent acceleration from the rookie out of Arizona. Keep an eye on the safety. He comes right there clean. Right off the edge, it's a good job by Chris Jennings spinning, making a miss, and picking up that first down. Played in the CFL for the Montreal Alouettes. And Jennings getting his opportunity with the injury to the rookie from Clemson, James Davis, now placed on injured reserve because of the shoulder injury. So it's Jennings with Vickers in front of him. Jennings could get a second crack here. Another corner, another safety blitz. Anderson gets rid of it, and it's Jennings off the screen. And you see all the white jerseys come in on Jennings, limit him to a two-yard gain through the air. It'll be second and eight. You know, one of the problems, you think when they, they blitz, a screen would be good. But the problem is you see the blitzes come. But watch this, these edge guys. Because it's a blitz zone, they're going to start working towards their left. You see them working to the left there, and they, they just fall right into that screen. So you, as a quarterback, you think, well, I see blitz, but it's a blitz zone variety where you see the blitz on the one side, and the other side is peeling in coverage. Anderson is 10 of 18, has not found Braylon Edwards for a completion. Edwards had a drop early in this game. Empty backfield from the gun. Blitz is coming, and this time it's Steve Hyden. And the play whistled dead after Keith Rivers was there to greet him. A four-yard pickup, and it sets up third and a manageable four yards. You know, this quarterback, Derek Anderson, he, he can get hot. He's a streaky guy. If you give him time, he can really hurt you in the passing game. I think the key is pass protection. They've already given up 11 sacks coming into today's game. That's second most in the National Football League. If they can improve that pass protection... Derek Anderson can be a very effective quarterback. You know, we asked him about leadership, and he said, look, guys, respect my effort, my preparation. I'm not going to belittle the players, but if somebody is making mistakes on offense, I'll get on them from the gun. Anderson, hot ball to Robert Royal, and a first down. Well, he's on a roll right now. Nine straight completions for Derek Anderson, and... The protection's been good. The routes are cleaned up a little bit. And you can already see him getting more comfortable with the timing and the rhythm in the passing game. You just watch him work. Robert Royal, he missed a couple throws early, but it seems like he has settled down here early in the second half. So, this drive continues to the 29-yard line for Cleveland. And Cincinnati will take a timeout. 10-21 to go in this third quarter. Ian Eagle, Rich Gannon. And the rest of our CBS crew with the Bengals in front, 14 to 7. Our but the Browns are driving. They've already taken up six plays and have gone 46 yards. 
They have a first and 10 at the 29-yard line of Cincinnati. Bengals took a defensive timeout. Harrison back in there for Cleveland. Ball opens up, and Harrison right up the middle. Robert Royal with a block. Harrison brought down inside the 10. Nice rip, 21 yards. Well, they've done a good job with this zone run all day. They, they start coming back up through here. Watch them watch the work to the backside to that guard bubble over Fraley. There you see the kick out by the tight end, Robert Royal. And then Jerome Harrison does it all, getting to that second level. But that's what they have to be able to do to continue to mix in that run, take some pressure off the passing game. And it's the longest run of the season for the Cleveland Browns. First and goal inside the 10. Browns looking for the equalizer from the gun. Anderson pumps, throws, end zone, too high. Braylon Edwards intended target. Well, the Cleveland Browns have not registered a rushing touchdown in quite some time. 235 consecutive rushes without a touchdown. And that's a problem, particularly in this part of the field. Good red zone teams, good teams down in the scoring zone have the ability to run the football. They have not been able to do that so far this season. Longest active streak in the NFL by a lot. Handoff. Harrison. And Harrison trying to get to the outside, held for no gain. Crocker, first man there. Jonathan Joseph over to finish him off. A good job by that Cincinnati defense in the back to go east and west rather than north and south and they get a lot of hats to the ball you watch this defense play they do a good job in terms of their pursuits their run fits and they game tackle very well offensive coordinator ryan dable tenth play of this drive matching wits with defensive coordinator of the bengals mike zimmer third and goal four receiver set shotgun for anderson Steps, guns, and intercepted. Jonathan Joseph comes up with a pick, and down the sideline, he's caught by Edwards from behind. Jonathan Joseph had a 30-yard interception return for a touchdown last week in the victory over Pittsburgh. This is a 32-yard return after the pick. And Cleveland comes up empty. Some confusion there between Derek Anderson and the tight end, Steve Hyden. You see, and these are the three or four out. We always talk about when you look at a guy like Derek Anderson, the three or four poor decisions that continue to jump up and really bite him. You see right here, the, the tight end confused. He doesn't see out in front of throws. He has to eliminate the three or four poor decisions that he seems to make each and every time out. And Eric Mangini has thrown the red flag. We'll have to take another look at it. Wondering if he thinks Joseph trapped the football. Yep. Read lips. Mangini felt the ball hit the ground, and it wasn't Cleveland a clean is pick. Challenging the ruling on the field that it was an intercepted pass. Coach's challenge from Eric Mangini, questioning that Jonathan Joseph interception call on the field. Here's Scott Green. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Cleveland is charged with a timeout. That is their second timeout. Another look at it for Jonathan Joseph. It, it appeared as if he was able to keep the ball on his hip. So while the ball may have been moving, Rich. Yeah, I don't think it ever touches the ground. You can see kind of traps it there right on his hip. You see right there, I think he has it in his hands. He's just trying to get it. Yep. And again, getting back to the interception. Eric Hyden is working to the flat, and, and your, your job as a quarterback is always to see out in front of throws. And Derek Anderson right here, he locks in on the tight end, never feels Jonathan Joseph sitting outside in that zone coverage. So Cincinnati takes over, first and 10 at the 32-yard line. And off Cedric Benson. And Benson able to turn the corner and forced out of bounds as he crossed the 35-yard line. Tough man to bring down to quell Jackson it's a five-yard gain for Benson. You know, it was interesting when we sat down last night with Carson Palmer. He looked uneasy to me. You know, he said this was going to be a dangerous game for them, one that they should win. And they knew that Cleveland would have their backs against the wall and come out and play very hard. He thought it was important for them to come out with a lot of energy early in this game, get off to a good start and get some momentum. And they were able to do that in the first half. Second and five, double tight end set. 
Coles is the motion man for Cincinnati. And keep it on the ground. Benson banging his oh, way. Ball came out. And the Bengals there to recover it. Evan Mathis in the area comes up with a loose ball. So Benson went down to the 40. Mathis recovers it at the 38 for Cincinnati. And you know, just to add to that, what Carson Palmer said, you know, he hopes that the team doesn't believe that they've done anything after the win over Pittsburgh. Well, yeah. it clearly was a fumble. Great hit by Dequell Jackson coming up in there. I don't know that Cedric Benson saw him, and it's just a good situation for Evan Mathis to have that ball right at his feet. So a third and four. Crowd is re-energized. Cincinnati with a 14-7 lead over Cleveland. Palmer pumping, losing the football. That'll be incomplete. And Palmer knew it the second that it slipped out. You know, there's some real opportunities for Carson Palmer to pull the ball down and run. They're playing so much of this two-man coverage. They have playing man underneath with health over the top. You see him, he's just waiting, and that ball just slips out there. But there's some opportunities for him to step up and run. That's not something that Carson Palmer normally thinks of. But when you see so much of this double-man coverage, boy, there's some big lanes there for the quarterback. Kevin Huber punting. Joshua Cribb standing at his own 17-yard line waiting. 7.26 to go, third quarter. Kevin Huber does a very good directional punter. Pins these return men back into the sidelines. And that's what he does here with Cribs. Makes one tackle, but just doesn't have a lot of real estate to work with as he's forced out of bounds. Divisional matchup here against the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals lead at 14-7. to And Cleveland with the football at its own 23-yard line. Anderson throws sideline to Massaqua and breaks a tackle. Muhammad Massaqua making a name for himself today. Leon Hall missing initially. It's a 20-yard pickup. Boy, it's, it's almost like they're not even looking for Braylon Edwards. They're just going to Massaqua, and he's making some big plays on after the catch. They try and get him into the transition of the run, but he is a stronger guy, and he can really make defenders miss in the open field five receptions 122 yards for massaqua originally from charlotte north carolina well i like what i see out of him first and ten of the 43. hand off harrison dealt with that initial wave and was able to keep his legs moving for a pickup of two frosty rucker in on that stop so while you wouldn't think that Cleveland has done all that much on the ground. Numbers are not bad. 15 carries, 72 yards for Jerome Harrison, starting for the injured Jamal Lewis out with the hamstring injury. And you have to be patient. You have to be patient with the, patient with the run game. Just keep calling them. Eventually, you'll, you'll hit one. But I think the other thing is they have to find a way to get Braylon Edwards going. Here, here we're into the third quarter. He still doesn't have a catch. Cleveland has 251 total yards of offense. Cincinnati with 183. Second and eight from the gun. Anderson to Massaqua. Into Cincinnati territory. Leon Hall the coverage. And that covers 13 yards through the air. Then again, you can just keep throwing it to this guy. I mean, he's been unbelievable. I'll tell you what, you watch him. He's a very precise route runner. Looks like he gets his depth. He does a nice job transitioning in and out of cuts. Very friendly at the top of his stem. A nice job, the rookie from Georgia. Tell so Braylon Edwards has been shut out so far today. Pro Bowl receiver in 2007. Look at this disparity there in the second half. Boy, Cleveland has done a nice job taking care of the football. New set of downs for the Browns to work with. Take the initial handoff. It's Cribs on the end around. And Cribs has the corner. Walking the tightrope. Joshua Cribs. Just trying to find ways for him to touch the football. That's a 15-yard run. You have to find ways to get your playmakers the ball. And if you can't throw it to him, why not hand it off to him? And Joshua Cribbs, seems like every time he's had a chance today, he's come through big time for the Browns. So Cleveland is on the move here. First and 10 at the Cincinnati 27. You know, you just got the sense when you're around the practice facility on Friday that this team was not going to go down without a fight. That is now 15 first downs for the Browns. Play clock is winding down. Handoff. And it's Harrison banging his way. Another positive.
gain for Harrison as he picks up seven. Alex Mack, he's the rookie out of Cal, the center, with a nice block up front. You know, I got a kick out of when we sat down with Eric Mangini yesterday. He said he's looking for some tough, smart, hardworking, selfless players where football is important to him. And he says that drives all of the decisions here in this building. And I believe that these players, while it's painful in the beginning, have bought into Eric Mangini and his system and what he's trying to create here in Cleveland. Second and three. Harrison now with 79 yards on the ground. Cincinnati pressing the line. Vickers shifts back to that fullback position. And they find a hole. Harrison, shake and bake. Oh, thrown down. Harrison took a shot. And Duque. And to pushing and shoving after the play. Oh, you can't do that. That's stupid. That makes absolutely no sense. And this is going to drive a guy like Eric Mangini crazy. You can't jeopardize your football team. You can't put your team in that type of a situation. You make a good play, and you follow it up with a, just an absolutely silly play by Braylon Edwards. Just no reason for that. You have to be able to control your emotions. Boy, that's really going to hurt them. Maybe it'll be offsetting. They're offsetting fouls on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 90. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 17 on the offense. Penalties offset. First down. Get him out of the game. And I get him right out of the game. Braylon Edwards and Pat Sims, the guilty party. Well, you just can't retaliate. You just watch this run. This is a great run by Harrison. And then finish it off. Now get back to the huddle. Just get back to the huddle. You have to be able to control your emotions. You can't stand over players. You can't retaliate and swing back. The official usually gets the second guy in that situation. They're fortunate that they had all settled penalties. Cleveland in the red zone. First and goal at the seventh. Anderson faked the handoff. Looked at Anderson throws. End zone. Incomplete. Edwards the intended target. Jonathan Joseph the coverage for Cincinnati. Three minutes to play in the third. Well, you're going to see they have, actually have double coverage, and you can see a trend here. They're taking some shots on first down. Watch the safety come into the play right here. He's helping back inside, and you can see Jonathan Joseph knows that. Would have had to be a perfect throw and catch there to get it done. Edwards yet to register a catch here today. He heads to the sideline. You can tell he's frustrated right now. They're doing a good job moving these tight ends around in this formation. A lot of two tight end sets today for the Browns. Eighth play of the drive. Handoff. Harrison hit hard. And Harrison goes down shy of the five. Ray Malaluga involved in that hit along with Chris Crocker for Cincinnati. Well, I'll tell you what. When this guy hits you, you feel it. He's a guy that has a lot of fun playing the game. He's always flying around and I think he's got a very bright future in this league. We had a chance to sit down with him last night. A very interesting guy. Guy that loves playing football. Third and goal. Well, you got to be smart here, Derek Anderson. You got to be smart. Make just make good decisions. See out in front of throws. From the gun. Anderson steps. Throw short of the goal line. Joshua Cribs brought down at the one. Leon Hall, the tackle. What do you do here? Well, they're going to go for it. Well, you want to try and get, your, get yourself, get the right depth to get into the end zone, but a good job there by Joshua Cribs making the catch and doing everything he can to stress forward and try and get that touchdown. Fourth down. Browns will go for it. And I this gets back to the ability to run the football in this part of the field. Can you make a yard right here running the football? Looking for the tie. Anderson a rollout. Run it, run it, run it, run it. There you go. Anderson's in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Derek Anderson today has definitely added a spark to this offense. This was an offense that really 
was in search of an identity, an offense that was struggling to make first downs. You see right here, they fake the run action. He comes out, he does a good job holding the defense and using his legs to get the touchdown. The Cleveland Browns have battled back. Extra point, Billy Cundiff. We are tied at 14 with a minute 37 to go in the third quarter. A 10-play, 77-yard drive for the Cleveland Browns. They have tied this one up at 14 apiece, a minute 37 to play in the third quarter. Cundiff kicks it off. Andre Caldwell is back deep for Cincinnati. Caldwell will take it out of the end zone. And Caldwell is brought down, loses the ball. Ball is loose at the 18-yard line. They'll peel away the pile, and Cleveland's got it. Blake Costanzo comes up with a loose ball on special teams. Boy, Andre Caldwell has been pretty good this year. He's a pretty sure-handed guy, but you got to protect the ball in piles. And there's some, there's some players flying around here, making some big hits in the kicking game. You see him crossing his field right there, and that ball clearly comes out. And Blake Costanzo is able to come up with it down the bottom of the pile. When you're struggling offensively, you need some contributions in terms of your defense to be able to generate some turnovers and field possession and the kicking game as well. They've gotten some help on both sides of the ball. A collision there for Maiava and Sorensen. Costanzo comes up with a loose ball, and the Browns take over a first and 10 at the Cincinnati 18-yard line. Anderson. And guns it to Steve Hyden for a seven-yard pickup, touched up by Dahani Jones, the linebacker. Andre Caldwell last week, the hero, catching the four-yard touchdown pass from Carson Palmer as the Bengals knocked off the Pittsburgh Steelers 23-20. to Well, that offensive line for Cleveland is doing a nice job, giving Derek Anderson plenty of time to set his feet and make good, accurate throws. Harrison in the backfield on a second and three. Does another blitz. And off. And Harrison right up the gut. Carries it inside the 10-yard line. See where they spot the football. If it's enough for a first down, Keith Rivers involved in that hit. Since Cincinnati last got a first down, the Browns have gotten 17 first downs. Cincinnati has not registered a first down since the first quarter. Yeah, and that's how you slow down Carson Palmer and that offense. You keep them on the sidelines and you eat up the clock. They've done a good job of that with Cleveland. And remember what the first quarter numbers were, Rich? It was so one-sided in favor of Cincinnati. And all those numbers have turned as Harrison comes up just a little bit short. Well, they're playing complimentary football right now in Cleveland. They're getting contributions from their defense. They're getting it done in the kicking game. And the offense has been the beneficiary. And they've been able to take advantage of some good field position and some turnovers. 156 total yards in the first quarter for Cincinnati. Compare that to 10 for Cleveland. Look at the numbers since. The time of possession for Cleveland in the first quarter, 52 seconds. And now the time of possession is in favor of the Browns. I think that's what was impressive. Derek Anderson and this offense, they just keep, they kept hanging in there while things didn't go particularly well for him early in this football game. Third and inches. Harrison trying to nudge his way forward. Yeah, Bengals claim they've stopped him, and boy, that initial spot does not look good for Cleveland. Cincinnati may have come through here. Robert Gathers. Well, when, when time runs out in this third quarter. As we start play in this fourth quarter, Ian Eagle, Rich Gannon, the rest of our CBS crew. Decision time for Eric Mangini facing a fourth and one as they switch sides. And the kicker, Billy Cundiff, has come onto the field for a short field goal attempt. Well, you and I debated this during the intermission. And I think you're right, Ian. This is their first opportunity to take a lead in this game today. And I think it's probably the right call. So it's a 27-yard field goal attempt. Zastadil will hold it. Pontbriand will snap it. 
Billy Cundin. He knocks it through. Derek Anderson and the Cleveland Browns have a 17 to 14 lead. Early stages, fourth quarter, Andre Caldwell fumbled the last kickoff return, which opened up the door for the Browns to take their first lead of the day. Caldwell will field this from the four. And Caldwell tackled out across the 20. A flag comes down. Mike Adams making the play on special teams for the Browns. But my guy Mike Adams from Delaware has been all over Illegal the field block today. in the back. Number 59, receiving team, 10 yard penalty. First set. And that's Brandon Johnson called for the penalty. Carson Palmer, 13 of 19, 120 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Benson's been held to 31 yards on the ground. Palmer to throw it on first down. Looping pass, and it's incomplete. Ocho Cinco unable to bring it in cleanly at second and ten. You see Brandon McDonald, he's going to have some help. He's got a flat defender there, but this is good coverage. And you see just not able to make the catch on the boundary. But listen, Carson Palmer has been in this situation all season. They've been behind in every game. And he's, he's a veteran guy. He'll hang in there. He'll keep battling. They've, they've done a nice job coming from behind the first three weeks only 27 yards on offense since the first quarter officially no yards in the second half fake the throw it's benson and the browns prepared up the middle defensively it's a three-yard gain on the ground kenyon coleman one of those former jets on the defensive side of the ball making the play for defensive coordinator rob ryan all right you, you know i get the sense that uh, when you talk to rob ryan you talk to eric mangini they have to make this a difficult place to play here in cleveland home field advantage this used to be a very difficult place to play, but the last year they were 1-7, they're 0-1 this year. They have to be able to create an environment that's very difficult for the opponents. Palmer throwing the deep ball up top and broken up. Chris Henry was open, and Brodney Poole ranging over to make the play. The Bengals go three and out. Well, you're going to see Chris Henry. He's going to be wide open, but keep an eye right here in the middle of the field. Rodney Poole. Look at him cover. He's reading the quarterback's eyes all the way. Look at all that ground he covers. That's the thing that Rodney Poole gives you. He's a very fast safety. He's got great range in the back end. Well, Andrew Whitworth has some words for the officials for Cincinnati. After the play, personal foul, offense number 77. Half the distance to the goal. Andrew Whitworth was very upset that there was a no call at the line of scrimmage. He tried to voice his opinion to a number of different officials, then ranged over towards some Browns players. There was a lot of talking going on right there up, up between these two football teams. Not a lot of love lost. I think the thing you have to do, you have to be able to walk away. You can't put your team in bad situations another example there of a young player just making a careless decision well, Kevin Huber with the back line just behind him Joshua Cripps standing at his own 44 oh, a good return ball here from midfield and Cribs is cut down after the five-yard pickup 43 yard punt Abdul Hodge making the play and a penalty marker down thrown at the 43 yard line the penalties are starting to pile up and starting to get a little sloppy. Five the against Cincinnati, three against Cleveland. After the play, personal foul, 54, receiving team, late hit, 15-yard penalty. 72nd all-time meeting between the Bengals and the Browns. Cincinnati leads the all-time series with a record of 36 and 35. But it's the Browns leading here in the fourth quarter, 17 to 14. They open up from the 40-yard line after the penalty. Anderson, draw play to Harrison. And Harrison for a five-yard pickup right up the gut. Let's take you back. The tools to victory before we actually kick this one off, Rich. How have they paid off so far? Well, for the Bengals, we talked about they're coming off an emotional win last week in Pittsburgh. 
could they come back and put it together here today? They've got it's been kind of rocky here. You look at the turnovers, just the one offensive scoring drive. Offensively for the Cleveland Browns, the emergence of Derek Anderson, not only that, but their ability to run the ball and finally clean things up defensively. They've held Cincinnati two of nine on third down conversions. They're playing better run defense. It's a positive all around. And Harrison over 100 yards for the first time in his NFL career. Play fake. Anderson, plenty of time. And dropped by Harrison. Fourth drop of the day for the Browns. Derek Anderson, 16 of 28, 207 yards, a touchdown and a pick. And one of the things that Derek Anderson's going to learn, and, 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 and this happens over time as you play this position longer, but, you know, some of these drops, he can help the backs, he can help the tight ends. You have to be, you talk about location on throws, you have to be very specific, and they're missing by just a little bit, but if you put it on the back shoulder of a tight end or back, usually they won't bring it in. When he got his first start in 2007, week two, he led the Browns to a 51 to 45 win over the Bengals and threw five touchdowns. Anderson, and they convert on third down. It's Robert Royal into Cincinnati territory, just across midfield, and a six yard pickup. Browns lead at 17 to 14, 12 and a half to go, fourth quarter. Give to Harrison, trying to push the pile. They do. And Harrison will gain three yards on first down. Good, strong effort by the fourth-year pro out of Washington State, originally from Kalamazoo, Michigan. You know, the impressive thing when you think about the way they've called this game offensively for the Browns is that is that they haven't panicked. They've, they've kept their poise. They continue to try and run the football. You see Brian DeBall right there. He's done a nice job with his play selection, mixing things up. And not only that, but keeping them in, in normal down and distance situations where they have a chance to convert on third down. On a second and seven. Play clock down to three. Running play again. Harrison runs into his own man. And could not emerge as Antoine Odom was there to help wrap him up. Pat Sims bringing him down at the line of scrimmage for no gain on the play. So Harrison at 103 yards on the ground. And now a third and seven here for Cleveland. You know, it's interesting when we sat down last night with Marvin Lewis, he's, he talked about how big of a game this was. He, he was worried what, whether or not his team could handle a little success. So the focus really has to be strong this week because they know next week that won't be a problem as they face a divisional foe, Baltimore Ravens. They know that's a team they can get up for. Chaka, Anderson. Uh, he tossed it quickly to Massaqua, but he's going to be short of a first down. Five-yard pickup. They needed seven. Well, you got to punt it here. And that's exactly what Mangini will do with 10-44 and counting left in this fourth quarter. Now well, your defense is playing well. And chance to pin him back and play some field, play that game of field position. Dave's Astadil with Quan Cosby. Backpedaling now to the nine-yard line. Cleveland holding on to a three-point lead. It ricocheted off the bounce. It looked like it was going to hang there for the Browns. Through the first three weeks of this regular season, Cincinnati has been able to rally each week. We know what happened, the freakish loss week one, but the come from behind win over Green Bay week two. They battled back against Pittsburgh last week. They're trying to do the same here. Cedric Benson met by Brandon McDonald. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 from the 20. Well, you just go back and look at these. There's one there, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five. There's five three and outs you mix in there. A fumble on a kickoff return. The fact that they have not been able to run the ball at all in this game. Cedric Benson, 11 carries, 34 yards. A frustrating day for this offense. They need some jumper cables to get it going here in the second half. On second down, keep it on the ground for Benson. And Benson is met by a number of Browns defenders to limit him to a gain of a yard, yard and a half. He couldn't break free of Eric Barton, the veteran and the former Jet, now in his 11th year in the NFL. The other thing they've done, 
a good job of uh, Cleveland defensively. They've done a nice job disguising their intentions. Uh, intentions. I think you don't want to show your hand early with a guy like Carson Palmer. So much of their offense is a check with me system where he wants to get up there, preview the front and coverage. Cleveland has done a good job delaying, not showing their hand early in the cadence. Third and eight, nine minutes to play. Browns lead at 17 14 over the Bengals. Chaka. Palmer throws and his tip. He was looking for Ocho Cinco and DeQuell Jackson getting a piece, the linebacker. Boy, you just could feel the energy, the emotion, the, 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 the momentum in this building. It, it, it swung big time in favor of the Browns. You see the sidelines over there. Just you watch the, the Bengal players as they come off the field. So Kevin Huber is back on the field. He's been very busy for the Bengals punting the football. Joshua Cribb standing at his own 26-yard line. Cribbs moving forward from the 36. Stays on his feet. He's got a lane. And Cribbs taking it to the outside. Oh, gorgeous spin by Cribs, and he's finally stacked up. Fans are on their feet here in Cleveland, and rightfully so. Joshua Cribs breaks three tackles to turn it upfield. And this all starts with the low liner from the punter, the rookie punter. But watch Joshua Cribs. I mean, he's just got great vision. Look at him. Look how strong he is. Uses that stiff arm so well. And watch him cut this one back and watch him spin right there. He's a very difficult guy to bring down. He has been huge today for this Cleveland football team. 50-yard return for Cribs. And the Browns take over a first and 10 at the 14-yard line of Cincinnati. 212 yards. 212 yards in the return game. This guy has been fantastic. Browns trying to add to their lead on first down. Harrison. Oh, he turned the corner, but got caught by Rivers, talented linebacker from USC, to help limit the damage. Two-yard gain. Clock is moving. We come up on eight minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Well, we haven't talked a lot about Antoine Odom today. He's been quiet over there, not only in, the in terms of pass rush, but the run game as well. The left side of that offensive line for Cleveland has done a nice job neutralizing Antoine Odom off the edge. Harrison now 105 yards on the ground, getting the start for Lewis. Short drop. Anderson. Oh, he ran right into a sack. And you on cue. Joe Thomas there. Antoine Odom. AFC Defensive Player of the Month. And Odom now with his eighth sack of the season. He's matched his career high. And this will, you just watch this matchup right here. This will drive a left tackle absolutely crazy. Watch him stymie him right there at the line of scrimmage. He's got him locked up. Odom's not even rushing anymore. Now watch Derek Anderson. He's going to run right into a sack. And you can see Joe Thomas. He's got his arms like, like what is going on here? As a quarterback, Derek Anderson, you can't have happy feet. Just sit in there. Trust the protection. Step up inside and make a good throw or run with the football. On third and 16, they'll go conservative. And Harrison driving forward. Gets back some of the yardage lost on that sack. Hank Fraley with a block, a seven-yard pickup. And now the field goal unit comes on for Cleveland. Well, they can't feel good about that series offensively. They're just a wasted opportunity. You get the great punt return by Joshua Cribbs. You got phenomenal field position, and you can't capitalize. So Billy Cundiff on. Cribbs catching his breath out there on the sideline. Well, he has been spectacular. He has been a difference maker today for the Browns. 31-yard field goal attempt. Zastadil will hold it. Punk Freon will snap it. Billy Cundiff. And he nails it from 31 yards away. Cleveland Browns, after the long return by Cribbs, have to settle for the field goal. Change in return man. Bernard Scott is now the deep man for Cincinnati. And he'll take it from the six-yard line. Scott, the rookie from Abilene Christian. And diving forward, just shy of the 30-yard line, Brandon McDonald making the play on special teams. 
Now it's up to the Cincinnati offense. Palmer pumps it on first down. Throwing that incomplete. It came off the top of the shoulder, it looked like, of Cedric Benson. May have gotten his hands on it, but the Cincinnati offense has been a no-show since the first quarter. And you can just see the frustration from Carson Palmer. He, there's just a confusion. You see him moving around. Look at all that movement from him and a ball that certainly Cedric Benson should catch. But at least a mentally demanding system defensively that the Browns have. I think the first couple weeks they were grasping a lot of new concepts, thinking rather than reacting. They're playing much faster defensively today. Cincinnati still does not have a first down since the first quarter. But they're still in this. Down by six. Hand off. Benson. He's buried. Mike Adams. And the former San Francisco 49er making the play behind the line of scrimmage. Well, keep an eye right here on Mike Adams. He's right on the slot. He's going to come right off the edge and make this play in the backfield. Receivers late getting off the field. Doesn't block him, but just a good alert play by Mike Adams. And that's been the difference so far today. Their ability to tackle Cedric Benson and hold Cedric Benson to just 32 yards rushing on 13 carries. Palmer has no yards passing in the second half. Third and 14, Palmer fires and complete. Making moves out across the middle. And Chris Henry, first completion of this second half. It's a first down for the Bengals. You know, the interesting thing is keep an eye on who comes in here late in the play. You watch the protections real good. Watch who comes in here at the very end to may help make this tackle. Mike Ferry right here. They have a receiver. This is how thin they are in the secondary for Cleveland. They've got the receiver, Mike Ferry, on the field playing defense. Bernard Scott now on the field for Cincinnati. First catch of the day for Henry under five minutes to go. Cleveland up 20 to 14. And off Scott. And Bernard Scott. Able to run for a first down, 11-yard pickup. Mathis a good block. Bobby Williams up front as well. And this is where this Cleveland defense has really struggled in the second half. They've surrendered 382 rushing yards in the second half this season. You see right here, good job cutting it back, winding this run back. But they've been on the field way too long in some of these early games. And that's where you give up big plays in the running game. And Scott will remain in there for the Bengals. New set of downs to work with. First and 10 at the 47 of Cleveland. Handoff for Scott. And Scott's got speed. Taking it to the outside. So the change of pace has worked for Cincinnati. Abram Elam over there to help make the play. A 16-yard pickup. Well, Bernard Scott has come in. He's been a nice change of pace back. And Cedric Benson's been struggling, but they, they've had the ability. This offensive line has done a good job hanging in there. And, and again, I can't tell you enough about the job that Carson Palmer has done. They've been behind in every ball game in the fourth quarter. They just keep hanging in there and finding a way to get it done. So now Benson is back in there. Palmer will work out of the shotgun on a first and 10 from the 31. Protection holds up. Palmer throws wide open over the middle. Catch made by J.P. Fashi. It's first and goal for Cincinnati. Boy, they don't even cover the tight end. You're going to see some confusion there in the second. Watch the tight end. He's just going to work right down the middle of the field. Both safeties are going to get out of the picture there. The linebackers, for some reason, step up. The linebacker on the other side can't make the play. You see Dequell Jackson tried to get over there. It was a blitz zone. Eric Barton was actually coming on that play. Good job by Carson Palmer recognizing that and getting that one up and down rather quickly. First and goal inside the five. Cincinnati looking to regain the lead. Under three minutes to play. Palmer throws it. Incomplete diving attempt by Lavernius Coles. And the clock stops with 2.46 remaining here in the fourth. Well, both teams trying to throw the ball first down in the red zone there. And they don't fool anybody. Good job there by Brandon McDonald staying at home. See right there, Lavernius Coles doing everything he can to stretch and try and make that catch. Palmer now 15 of 26, 163 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Browns holding on to a six-point lead. Palmer put it up in the air and knocked away. Ocho Cinco had it initially, and Eric Wright 
was able to stay with the play. Broken up. And what did Eric Wright tell us the other day? He said, you need, ha you need to have tunnel vision when you play this position. Doesn't do a very good job locating that ball. And boy, Carson Palmer, he throws this fade route as well as any quarterback in the National Football League. But look at that tight spiral there. A good job by Eric Wright. Right at the last minute, getting that hand in there. Third and goal. Four receiver set. Shotgun Palmer. Little shovel up the middle. Brian Leonard. And driven down after a gain of two. Sean Rogers helped make sure of it. He is such a massive load in the middle. A little shovel pass. Safe call here. Good job on the backside. You see Sean Rogers there. He's not fooled. And fourth down and goal. Cincinnati is going for it. They still have a couple of timeouts. They still have the two-minute warning. Wow, some confusion right here. You see Carson Palmer trying to direct traffic. Get Chad lined up. Now we the left tackle. And we've hit the two-minute warning. So Cincinnati will have an opportunity to talk about it. With Cleveland in front, 20 to 14. Wow, Cleveland took a two timeout. Two seconds. With 202 left, Eric Mangini took a timeout. Fourth and goal. Cincinnati down by six. From the gun. Palmer. Looking. Palmer throwing. Caught. Touchdown. Ocho Cinco. The Bengals have rallied again. They are an extra point away from taking the lead here in Cleveland. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't say enough about the job that Carson Palmer did there. You talk about keeping your poise when things around you are crazy and hectic. Just kept moving around, kept buying time, allowing a guy like Chad Ochocinco to come open in the back of the end zone. You see it week in and week out from Carson Palmer. There is never any panic in the way that he operates. Well, another bad snap. And it's blocked! Extra point is blocked with a minute 55 to go! And that's, that's on the long snapper, Brad St. Louis. I, you and I have talked about this. This is a number of bad snaps in the, ball, in the ball game, but also this season, that have cost this team a chance to win games. If you combine field goals and extra points throughout Sean Rogers' career, both Detroit and Cincinnati, he has blocked 14 kicks. We are tied at 20. The up man, Jerome Harrison, is out of bounds with a minute 52 to go. The Browns have a first and 10 at their own 33-yard line. They have a minute 52 to work with, tied at 20. They have to be smart. They have no timeouts left. Anderson pumps. And a low throw caught by Furry. And a modest gain on first down of five yards. Clock is moving. Well, they had the challenge, and they, they've wasted a couple timeouts because they, they've, there's been some indecision on both sides of the football. But there's a number of ways to stop the clock, as you know. Incompletions in two minutes won't hurt you, of course, unless it's on fourth down. On second and five, good hands, soft hands by Mike Furry, and he picks up the first down. Seven-yard gain. And you only need about another 30 yards to get yourself in field goal range. You have plenty of time. You just can't afford a sack in this situation. Derek Anderson can't hold the football. Here comes the blitz. You've got to get rid of it. From the 45, he does get rid of it. And complete to the tight end. Hyden out across midfield into Cincinnati territory. We are under a minute to play now after the seven-yard pickup through the air. Yeah, Steve Hyden has a good feel for space in some of these zone coverages. He's a very nifty tight end in the open field. Down to 48 seconds per minute from the shotgun. Anderson looking downfield and will throw it away. So Billy Cundiff, who is filling in for the injured Phil Dawson, waiting for his opportunity 41 seconds left it's a third and three first things first you have to find a way to convert here anderson from the gun 
They need three yards to keep this drive well, going. We have one on one with the young receiver right there. And caught! Massaqua, what a day for the rookie matched up with Leon Hall. Boy, he has won that battle all day. And he'll spike the football at the 40 yard line. 27 seconds remain for the Browns. I've been really impressed with the way Derek Anderson has handled the situation today. He is he is sat in there and he has delivered some darts to these receivers. I get the sense that this this is a young football team that's growing up in front right in front of our own eyes. Well, they still need another 10, 12 yards. Right now they're looking at a 58-yard field goal attempt. 27 seconds remaining. Tied at 20. The Browns and the Bengals. Anderson steps, fires, and it bounced off the helmet of Robert Royal. And the one thing you know when you throw to tight ends, they have to see the throw. Derek Anderson does a great job anticipating. Watch, this ball is out of his hands before the receiver is even out of his break. It hits him right in the face mask. You can see the shock on Robert Royal's face. But Derek Anderson does a wonderful job anticipating, but the one thing he'll find out when he goes back and watches the film on Monday, you have to make sure that these tight ends see the throw as it comes out of your hand. And remember, they have no timeouts to work with here, so they have to be careful if they don't get the first down with 23 seconds remaining. Comes the blitz again. Can't hold it. Anderson and hit as he throws. It's incomplete. 19 seconds left, and now it's fourth down for the Browns at the 40-yard line. You're looking at a 58-yard field goal attempt or a punt. Well, they're going to punt it. Going to punt it. Must not be in. Must not be in Billy Cundiff's range. Now, Billy Cundiff, his career long in the NFL is 56 yards, and he did that back in 2005. We mentioned earlier he kicked a 62-yarder back in his college days. We're only talking 57. Now we're only talking an extra yard here. So Dave's asked to Delon to punt it. And this one will be down inside the 10. 11 seconds remain on the clock. We are in the fourth quarter with the Bengals and the Browns tied up at 20 apiece. Cleveland looking for its first win of the season. The Bengals, one of the bigger surprises so far in the young season, trying to improve to 3-1. And, and Carson Palmer has been in the middle of these come-from-behind victories that the Bengals have squeezed out in each of the last two weeks against Green Bay and against Pittsburgh. And keep in mind, if they would have gone for that that field goal there and missed I and they would have gotten the ball at or around mid midfield and with two timeouts left in some 20 some seconds you'd put Carson Palmer in a chance to give him a chance to go back out there and maybe convert and give their, their field goal kicker a shot so probably the right decision there by Eric Mangini and we are headed to overtime here in the Battle of Ohio uh, Sunday October afternoon in Cleveland for the Browns and the Bengals as we get ready for overtime, Ian Eagle, Rich Gannon, and the rest of our CBS crew. Cincinnati has won the toss, so Billy Cundiff will kick it off for Cleveland. When you look at way, the way Cleveland has played in this game, they obviously they struggled running the football. They came in and did a much better job today, and then certainly Cleveland's defense, they couldn't get off the field on third down. They couldn't stop the run. They did a much better job here. In this football game, holding Cedric Benson to 32 yards, rushing on 13 carries. Deep man is Bernard Scott. Rookie is standing at his own three-yard line, awaiting the kick from Cundiff. And a booming kick from Cundiff. This will sail out of the end zone, and the Bengals will have it at their own 20-yard line to open up overtime. So we know how dangerous Carson Palmer is in late game situations. He led the Bengals down the field to what looked to be a go ahead touchdown, a flag on the play. Well, oh, it's too bad. It's going to come back. Offside, it's kicking team, number 51. Penalized five yards, re kick. Well, that's a big penalty. Not only is it the five yards, you, you force your, your coverage unit to go back out there and run all the way down the field again. And not only that, but you allow a team like Cincinnati 
to get get on the sidelines here and trying to put together a better return. So penalty against Alex Hall, backup linebacker, second year from St. Augustine, Division II school. Well, you're going to need another big kick, another deep kick by Billy Cundiff here. Cundiff was signed off the street, had been out of football, formerly with the Dallas Cowboys. Also short stint with New Orleans. You know, as you pointed out earlier, I am that Andre Caldwell no longer back returning kicks. You got Bernard Scott back there. Caldwell put one on, on the ground early in the first half, and so they made the change to Bernard Scott. So Cundiff is kicking off from the 25-yard line. And Bernard Scott standing at the one. Start of overtime here in Cleveland. The Browns and the Bengals tied at 20. Another good kick. Scott from the two. Scott to the outside breaks a tackle. There's a difference of 10 yards right there. And another penalty marker comes down this time at the 44 yard line. So a 28 yard return. First penalty worked against Cleveland, which negated the big kickoff by Cundiff. Bengals would have had it at the 20. Scott Green. Personal foul. 34 receiving team. Delivering a blow to the head. 15 yard penalty. First down. First play of overtime. As the Bengals have it first and 10 of the 15 yard line. Shotgun for Carson Palmer. Set up the screen. He's got Cedric Benson. Little juke move by Benson and falls forward for a first down. Out across the 25-yard line, Rodney Poole over there. Defensively, it's an 11-yard gain. Boy, a great way to start a drive. And they have, they're a very good screen team, not only with Cedric Benson, but we saw in the first half with Daniel Coates. I think the reason why they have the ability to get these big linemen out in front, they're very athletic, and they can get up there and cut for these backs and tight ends. From the 27 yard line. Coach, the motion man. On the ground for Benson. And Benson bursting through the hole. That's a first down for Cincinnati. And a 12 yard pickup for Cedric Benson, who has been very quiet here today. Well, he has been quiet, but he's still very dangerous. You see this offensive line that's built to run the football. And Cedric Benson, when he gets into the second level, can be a very difficult tackle. So the line of scrimmage is now the 39-yard line. Benson came in averaging just under 100 yards per game. So it held at 44. Benson gets it again. And Benson picks up three yards, running off tackle to quell Jackson there to make the stop. You see Rob Ryan there doing everything you can to find a way to, to confuse Carson Palmer. You know, they've done a nice job here in the second and second half of this football game, doing a good job with their third down situations, their sub packages, using their different personnel groups to confuse Carson Palmer. Browns have lost nine straight games dating back to last season. Second and seven, fake the handoff. Palmer looks, throws, incomplete. Ocho Cinco got his hand on it. He claims that he was being held. Eric Barton, the linebacker, was over there. It's third down. Boy, they went with the play action. They thought they would fool him, but it's a good job by that Cleveland secondary staying at home. You can see Brandon McDonald there trailing Chad Ochocinco all the way, knowing he has help over the top from the safeties. Boy, again, you can see some confusion as they come out of the huddle. Cincinnati having a difficult time getting lined up. Here's Mike Ferry here, your third wide receiver, playing safety for you. On third down, Palmer flushed out of the pocket. And Palmer throwing on the move. It's incomplete. Ocho Cinco, the intended target. Rodney Poole with the assignment defensively, and the Browns' defense holds. Boy, that's a big stop. And Rodney Poole today, Ian, has made some huge plays in the secondary. He covers a lot of ground. He has great range. He is more, he's like a corner playing second, playing safety. Gives you that type of athleticism and flexibility. 
Now Joshua Cribs has been an MVP here today. Kevin Huber will punt it. Cribs is standing at the 10 yard line. High punt. And Cribs doesn't even have a shot to return it. It's Huber angled it out of bounds. Well done by Huber. Cleveland's first possession of overtime. And Jerome Harrison has nowhere to go. Pushing and shoving after the whistle. Antoine Odom over there. It's a one-yard game. You know, I can go back and count the number of times at the start of the series where Mike Zimmer has brought pressure. Again, we saw right there Chris Crocker in the backfield penetration disrupting that run. And Boy, you'd love, to, you'd love to block him up on first down and take a shot downfield, knowing that you have one-on-one -on, -one on those outside lanes. Harrison, 113 yards on the ground today. His first 100-yard game as a pro. Play action. Anderson sets, throws a short ball to Harrison. Out across the 20-yard line to Honey Jones. Limits him to a four-yard gain. We talked earlier about... Derek Anderson not falling in love with the big play every time his willingness to work the progressions and check it down once in a while I've seen him do that today and the other thing I am this guy has really impressed me It's not an easy situation to come into replacing Brady Quinn, but he's handled himself well They didn't get off to a great start, but he has hung in there and battled and, and put up some really impressive numbers 22 of 39 248 yards through the air Third and six for Cleveland comes the blitz from the gun they handle it and nobody home Anderson forced to release it in the direction of Massaquois who's had a tremendous effort today Eight catches 148 yards but a rather quiet three and out for the Cleveland offense well when they needed it the most they got it that Bengals defensive line they've done a better job applying pressure on the quarterback it was a point of emphasis all offseason and done a nice job so far this season creating some negative plays with their rush Dave Zastadil will punt it. Quan Cosby waits for it at the 33-yard line. This will take a bounce, and it favors the Browns rolling inside the 25-yard line. So Cincinnati will get the football back at the 24 after a 55-yard punt by Dave Zastadil. Well, I'll tell you, this scares you. You know, you just keep giving number nine opportunities, a guy like Carson Palmer, and eventually he's going to hurt you. He just has that ability. The law of averages would tell you that Carson Palmer at some point is going to piece together a drive to get Cincinnati into field goal range. Well, you know, we made the comment about, the, you know, he had that high ankle sprain in, in, in preseason. Maybe his lateral movement's not as good, but we talked to Rob Ryan on Friday. He said one thing that hasn't changed is his arm strength. He can still puncture the ball and any seam and throw it vertically down the field as well as anyone. Palmer has a couple of touchdown passes and an interception. Lee Flicker and Palmer will throw it. And dropped! Ocho Cinco unable to hold on to the football. That's a good job there, though. Cleveland secondary was not fooled at all. They, they tried the Flea Flicker for the second time today. You just watch the secondary. You're going to see going to see Ocho Cinco is going to come across but watch the secondary they do a nice job there in their two deep coverage passing it off not only that communicating and falling right back underneath in coverage second and ten for Cincinnati on the ground Benson the hole opens up and Cedric Benson out across the 45 yard line 21 yard burst for Benson and this will make them sick when they watch the film tomorrow. We talk about run fits. Freeze it right there. Look at that hole. A big gap right there. You can't do that. You have to be secure in your run fits, your assignments. They've done a nice job today limiting the explosive plays, but they give up one there at crunch time. They call him down at the 45. Benson now with 68 yards rushing. Bernard Scott checks in. And Scott gets the call. Scott met just a yard past the line of scrimmage. Give him a gain of two with forward progress. 
Clock is moving. Ten minutes and ten seconds to play in OT. You know, it was interesting when we talked with Marvin Lewis last night. He said he went back and he studied Miami, Baltimore, Atlanta. He looked at teams that had big turnarounds a year ago. He said the, their ability to run the ball, the rushing offense, really helps you to manage the game defensively. And if we can just not give up the big play. And I think that the impressive thing today for Cincinnati, while they didn't run the ball particularly well in the first half, they've kept after it here in overtime. Second and eight now for Cincinnati. From the gun. Palmer. Pumping, throwing, tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Corey Williams getting his hand on the football. It sets up third and long now for the Bengals. I tell you, this is two teams that are just slugging it out. You see the, the look in Carson Palmer's eyes. And you see Marvin Lewis there. Everybody's doing everything they can to make a play to help their football team win. Marvin Lewis coaching in his 100th regular season game. He is 84 in his career against the Cleveland Browns. Boy, they've spent a lot of time here this week. Cleveland on their third down defense, and it's really paid off today. Cincinnati just 3 of 13 in third down conversions. On a third and eight. Palmer deep drop and tripped up. Palmer goes down. Cameron Wimbley helps to touch him up. Oh, that's not good. He's slow getting up, too. First sack of the day for this Cleveland defense as Palmer walks off gingerly. Just watch Cameron Wimbley. He's right there at the bottom of the screen. He's going against Anthony Collins. Does a nice job, even though he's on the ground, still staying after. He somehow finds a way to get Carson Palmer on the ground. Huber to putt. Cribs at the 10-yard line. They are just trying to avoid Cribs touching the football. And again, Huber able to angle it. Boy, that is outstanding. Harrison, the single setback. Anderson sends Royal in motion. Long count. Take the handoff. Pump. Anderson throwing. Deep ball. Massacre. Incomplete. Leon Hall step for step in coverage. We talked about the tendencies, talked about Cincinnati's ability at the change of possession to bring pressure on the early down. So what does Cleveland do? Cleveland's going to block them up and take a shot downfield with their one-on-one -on -one matchup. A good play call. They fake the play. Look at all that blocking. They keep seven men in the block. They take the shot. They just can't beat the corner in one-on-one -on -one coverage. So Hall will get a breather for Cincinnati. Morgan Trent, a rookie out of Michigan, steps in for him. On second down, Anderson, pocket collapsing. Anderson, incomplete. Looking for Jerome Harrison, but he threw it towards the feet. And basically, it's a throwaway by Anderson. Well, Derek Anderson's getting a little antsy in the pocket. I see him moving and sliding a lot. I'd rather see him step up inside and trust that protection a little bit. I think he has more time than he realizes. But it's a good job at the end there, throwing it away and not taking a sack. Leon Hall back on the field for Cincinnati. Browns with a third and ten at the 16-yard line. Cribs to the sideline for Cleveland. 8.46 remaining in OT. A three-receiver set, Massaqua, Edwards, and Furry. Chaka, Anderson, rifles. Wow, what a good throw. And Furry brings it in. On the sideline route, it's a first down for the Browns. Well, you know, they've run this a couple times today, and they've, they've missed it. They've either been early with the throw, it's been behind him, but look at this. They get good protection. He drifts a little bit to his right, trusts the, trusts the protection, and makes a great throw on the boundary to Ferry. I, you know, there's certain things you have to be able to do to be successful at that position, at the quarterback position. So far, I like what I see from Derek Anderson. On a quick count, handoff to Harrison, and he has spun down. Robert Gather is able to break through and limit Harrison to no gain on the play. You know, getting back to Derek Anderson, you obviously you have to know what to do at the quarterback position in terms of the system, the game plan. Clearly, Derek Anderson is in control. You have to be an accurate passer. He showed me today that he can do that as well. And the other thing is, can you make a play when things break down around you? And he has certainly been able to do that for the Browns today. He's added, He's been the spark that they've been looking for offensively. Offensive coordinator, Brian Gable. See what he dials up here on second and ten. Browns and Bengals tied at 20. We are in overtime. 
Anderson straight back. And Massaqua lost his footing. Third and ten now for Cleveland. And that pressure by Ray Maluga up inside forced Derek Anderson to let go of that ball before he was actually ready to do that. He needed an extra second to be able to hit Massaqua on the boundary there. Another critical third down for the Browns. Well, you talk about situational football and how much time is spent on third down for both, not only both of these football teams, but offensively and defensively. Key play here in the game. On third down from the 27-yard line. Anderson hit as he throws, and fortunate that it wasn't intercepted by Gathers. Corner blitz Morgan Trent came over and gave Anderson a shot. The Browns will punt. Well, we, what do we, I look at my play sheet here. I say pressure at crunch time against this Bengal defense. In two minute crunch time, red zone, all out pressures. Mike Zimmer will heat you up in these critical times in the football game. Dave Zastadil, his eighth punt of the day with 7.35 to go in overtime. Juan Cosby, back pedals. Has some room from the 15. And I could not get through that initial wave of Brown special teamers. He's brought down just short of the 25-yard line by Blake Costanzo. 58-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Cincinnati involved in the last NFL tie was last season. Philadelphia and the Bengals. And you remember Philadelphia's quarterback was a little confused at the uh, at the end of that that ball game. He was. That was a, a major storyline. But <laughs> Philadelphia. Are you saying that has something to do with the Syracuse education? I don't know. Donovan McNabb didn't realize that games could end in a tie in the National Football League. You know, I went to Syracuse. I know, I know, have I know you heard? That. I, know that. I told you my resume. <laughs> All right, Cincinnati takes over first down at the 25-yard line. The Bengals and the Browns are tied at 20. We've got 7:24 to go in OT. Carson Palmer, how many chances are the Browns going to give him? Palmer, and that rainbow delivery to Lavernius Coles, and Coles looks dinged up on the play. Incomplete, Coles will get up on his own power and walk off to the sideline. Again, another example where Carson Palmer needed an extra split second there, and he didn't have it. Both of these, corner, uh, these defensive coordinators are doing a very good job bringing some pressure on the early downs. Rob Ryan's defense, by far their best performance of the young season. Cincinnati facing a second and ten at the 25-yard line. Benson. And able to shoot through that hole for a five-yard pickup. Brings up third down. David Bowens in on that stop for Cleveland. We talked about the self-inflicted wounds that have really hurt this Cleveland defense, the alignments, the assignments, and the adjustments. I think they've done a much better job of that here today, eliminating the mental errors and, and the explosive plays that have hurt them the first three weeks of the season. Huge play here on a third and five for the Bengals. Coles in motion. Chaka. Palmer throws it. Incomplete. Spun around. Ocho Cinco made a diving attempt towards the sideline. And the Bengals are forced to punt again. You know, Brandon McDonald, who struggled last week with Derek Mason, has done a really nice job here today in his trail coverage technique on Chad Ocho Cinco. And See the confusion there between Chad and Carson talking about it on the sidelines. Boy, another chance for Joshua Cribs to break this thing open. Now, Huber continues to plant these punts right near the sidelines. See if he can do it again. Cribs standing at his own 20. And this one returnable. And able to squeeze through that hole and bring it back across the 30-yard line. A 10-yard return, 49-yard punt. Brandon Johnson making the play on special teams. 6.20 to go in overtime. Browns and Bengals tied at 20. Jerome Harrison up the middle. Well, you know, every time Joshua Cribs went back there to return the punt today, I, you take a deep breath. Just think there's got to be some way offensively to get him back on the field and, and get the ball in his hands. We saw a reverse earlier in the game with him. And, 
Well, he is such an explosive, dynamic player. He's made such a huge difference today for this Cleveland team. Well, last possession, we saw Anderson take a shot down the field from Massaqua. He couldn't convert it. For the most part, we've seen Cleveland go conservative offensively here in overtime. A lot of shift and a lot of motion, a lot of movement around by that Cleveland offense. Anderson throwing tight end. Steve Hyde, there he is. Right out near midfield, 16 yards. The clock is moving down to 5, 25 and counting here in OT. And I give a lot of credit to the offensive coordinator, Brian Dable. He's done a nice job with the protection. They, a lot of their throws have come off of play action, not because they're trying to fool them with the running game and the play action look, but because it's a good, solid seven-man protection. It allows Derek Anderson to sit back there, set his feet, and make a good, accurate throw. Fourth catch of the day for Hyden. He does have a touchdown. Five minutes to play in overtime. Rounds are out at midfield. Handoff. Harrison. Trying to bulldoze his way into Cincinnati territory. He does for a four-yard pickup. Keith Rivers, the tackle. Now, if you're Derek Anderson in the huddle right now, you're talking to these big guys up front. You're saying, guys, I just need a couple more. Just give me two more first downs. We'll win this game. And not only that, but you have to be smart here. We can't afford any penalties. No holding penalties. No false starts. Let's give ourselves a chance to win this in overtime. And it's Billy Cundiff, the kicker, waiting for his chance here in OT. Second and six for the Browns. Harrison, single setback. Green, there it is. It's Harrison, and it was read perfectly. Brandon Johnson, the former Arizona Cardinal. Boy, he just stuck with it for a loss of four. Boy, that was a, just a good alert play there by Brandon Johnson. That could have been huge. He does a nice job with his reads. He comes off and makes a big stop in the backfield. So Cleveland is back in its own territory with 352 and counting left in overtime. Back to a third and 10 now. Well, here comes pressure, right? You know it's coming, right? Showing blitz. Nope. From the gun. Yeah, here it comes, sure enough. Delayed. Oh, he had him. Incomplete. Mike Furry out over the middle. And you knew it was coming. You know it's coming at a critical juncture against this Bengals defense. You know Mike Zimmer is going to bring pressure. They do a nice job. They call the right play. They block it up. Derek Anderson just missed that throw. Watch. Set your feet. Set your feet. Just make a good, accurate throw. To be strong at the top of that drop. Each team has two timeouts remaining. We've got 332 left on the clock in overtime. Zastatil to punt it. Quan Cosby. Standing at the nine-yard line. High sailing kick. This one will land at the one and bounce into the end zone. We've had six punts in overtime. Each team has punted the ball three times. Now Cincinnati gets it with 323 to go from the 20. Palmer on the gear. Cedric Benson's second effort gets to the line of scrimmage. David Bowens helped wrap him up. Well, they guessed right there with the pressure. And see, Rob Ryan, it's, it's been a chess match all day between these coordinators, dialing up blitzes and disguising coverages. And you have to do that when you play a quarterback like Carson Palmer. He is a very sharp guy. And if you show it early, he can really pick you apart. Second and 10 from the 20. Under three minutes to play in OT. from the gun. Palmer sets his feet, throws, hauled in initially by Caldwell, and it's ruled incomplete. Boy, he hurt himself on that one too, Andre Caldwell. Yeah, that right arm as Caldwell heads towards the sideline. Well, they've been playing so much. Look who's covering him. That's Mike Ferry right there, their third receiver covering the third receiver for the Bengals. You think that's not a good job? The more you can do, my man. How good is that? Now, Furry, formerly part of the secondary, going back to his St. Louis days. And that's, this, is a, this is an unselfish group. You go back to, to what they did in New England, using different players in different positions. On third down, Palmer throws it and finds a seam. Chris Henry 
And a first down out across the 35-yard line for Cincinnati. Down to 228 and counting, left in overtime. That's a 20-yard hookup Palmer had missed on his previous seven passes. Let's go, let's go. From the 40-yard line. Ryan Leonard is in there for Cincinnati. Palmer, short drop, a quick throw, and it's incomplete. Ocho Cinco in the area, Daniel Coates in the area. And Shane Graham, the nine-year veteran, hoping for an opportunity to put this one away. You gotta, you gotta wonder about Shane Graham and what he's thinking, whether or not he's even gonna get a chance. You, you know, you think about the snaps, the problems with the hold, that can be very disruptive to a kicker. Palmer is one for his last nine through the air. 2.13 to go in overtime. Second and ten for Cincinnati. Palmer steps and throws. Almost intercepted. Looking for Lavernius Coles. Brodney Poole was over there with Hank Poteet. Boy, they're, they're playing they're playing so much of this two deep man coverage. The corners watch them funnel the receiver inside, knowing they have help over the top from the safety. And I'll tell you, Bradley Poole has been all over the field today in that secondary for the Browns. He's made a lot of great pay, plays. He's driven on a lot of throws. Third and ten. Crowd on its feet here in Cleveland. 2.07 to play. Browns and Bengals tied at 20 in overtime. Palmer fires, flagged down as he connects with Lavernius Coles. Two penalty markers on the play. Coles with a spin move to the 41-yard line. 19-yard pass play for Cincinnati. Now the Cincinnati offense has made its way to the Cleveland Browns side of the field. There are two fouls against the defense that will be declined. Holding, number 92. Also, illegal hands to the face, number 22. Both those fouls are declined. First down. Rodgers and McDonald This is for also penalties. the two-minute warning. And we have hit the two-minute warning in overtime. Two minutes to play in overtime. The Bengals and Browns tied at 20. First down for Cincinnati. Set up the screen. screen. There it is. And Daniel Coates. This time, the Browns prepared for it. Limit Coates to a gain of one. Corey Williams, the tackle. Clock is rolling. A minute 47 and counting. Left in OT. See Bob Bryan there. Doing everything you can. You see Shane Graham getting warmed up. And everything you can as a defense to try and find a way to get a stop. Sack here would be huge for this defense. Second and ten. From the 40. From the gun. Well, yeah. There it is. And Palmer goes down. Corey Williams. Pressure came from Sean Rogers, and Williams finished him off. 113 left on the clock. And both both sacks have come on the right side. You look at Anthony Collins right here. He's up inside. They had a little TE, a little spin game. And you can see he comes right back around. The, some confusion on the right side of that offensive line. And Cleveland has used a timeout. So back it up to the 43-yard line. They lose three yards on the sack and now face a third and 13. Target line right around that 35-yard line. You're looking at about eight yards. Career long of 53 against Denver back in 2004. Shane Graham went to the Pro Bowl in 2005. He's the most accurate kicker in Bengals history. But he's had a very difficult year, and I can tell you, I held early in my career for some of these kickers, and it's unsettling when you're worried about whether or not the snap is going to be good and whether or not the holder can get it down so you can actually put your foot on it. Well, right now, Cincinnati needs at least eight yards to make this realistic. Palmer looking. Palmer throws under duress. And Brian Leonard is thrown down by Abram Elam. They pick up a couple of yards there. Cleveland has used its final timeout as Palmer took a shot from Corey Williams.
Boy, Corey Williams has really turned it on here late in the game, and, and, and so has the rest of this defensive line, getting some pressure up the field, forcing Carson Palmer to let go of the, bur or the ball before he's actually ready. And think about all the decisions now at play here for Cincinnati. It's fourth and ten. The ball is just short of the 40-yard line. There's 104 left in overtime. It's a 58-yard field goal attempt, or you punt. Cleveland has no timeouts left. Or you go for it on fourth down. Well, you know what? I just think that they don't have any confidence right now in this field goal unit. I, I really don't. They've had not only they have they had problems eyeing with the snap, but they've also had problems with their field goal protection unit slowing down Sean Rogers up front. And I can't I can't imagine that you wouldn't take a shot at a field goal here, except for the fact that every time you've tried an extra point or a field goal today, it's 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 been disrupted by Sean Rogers. I mean, you're looking at a fourth and a fourth and ten here. I mean, your odds of converting a fourth and ten are not very good, particularly the way this Cleveland defense has played here late in this football game. 104 to play. On fourth down, Palmer steps up, and Palmer will run it. Carson Palmer's got a first down with 55 seconds to play in overtime. And what did I say earlier in the game? I said they're getting so much too deep man coverage that if Carson Palmer could ever pull it down, Boy, there'd be some big lanes. You just watch here. Good job. You, he knows all day long he's been getting two deep man coverage. Everybody has their back turned to the line of scrimmage. Just a good alert play by a veteran quarterback in Carson Palmer. And I wonder if that didn't come down from up top and was conveyed to him on the sidelines that you're getting so much of this coverage that there's some big opportunities if you just pull it down and use your legs. So now the line of scrimmage is the 26-yard line. Obviously, they are in Shane Graham's field goal range. Right now, they're staring at a 44-yard field goal. That's if they gain no more yards with 56 seconds remaining. Do you think they're going to talk about some way to block Sean Rogers if they line up for a field goal? Man. Boy, what a call. And what a play by Carson Palmer on fourth down a tuck and run for first down yardage to and keep this drive going and it gets back to what we talked about earlier at crunch time he has been on fire for the Bengals this season 56 seconds remain in OT Palmer gets rid of it underneath Brian Leonard turns and cuts it upfield for extra yardage brought down at the 16 yard line a good safe call there a screen get it out to your to your third down back Brian Leonard and, and then take the ball upfield and call it a second and one Cleveland cannot stop the clock 28 seconds remaining Browns are out of timeouts look for a run right here and it's Leonard by himself in the backfield Right, audible. Watch this audible. Take a shot downfield. Watch this. Nope. Leonard. First down. Carries it out across the 15-yard line. And seven seconds remain as the timeout is taken. So Shane Graham will come on trying to give the Bengals the victory in a three-and-one record. You know, here on the young season. I, and I'm curious why they called a timeout with seven seconds left. Because what's going to happen now is you're going to be forced to kick the ball off to Joshua Cribs. Well, no, it's it's over. You win. Oh, that's right. What am I saying? <laughs> you get so confused here at the end of the game. Thank you for the correction. We're in overtime. Is Donovan McNabb in the booth? Uh, Where, where's Donovan? <laughs> You get so confused <laughs> in overtime here. This game is going all the way. We're, 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 we're well into overtime here. I'll stay. I'll do I'll do bonus football. You almost think you're in the fourth quarter. We haven't had an overtime game all year. No timeouts remaining. This is for the win. Well, I'll tell you what, everyone's eyes right now are on Brad St. Louis and Sean Rogers right here in the middle of this pile. You need a good snap and you got to find a way to slow down number 92. 31 yard attempt for the victory. Shane Graham. And he drills it. 
The Bengals win in overtime. The Battle of Ohio belongs to Cincinnati.